pensado. Hello, U N O A U. Hello. This is New York. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. I can see you. Okay, great. Uh, are you going to have a presentation, a video presentation today? Computer, PowerPoint? No? Uh, I, I'm a technician, really, I don't know. Let them come and just uh, they'll. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, here it comes.
Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can we uh, take our seats, please? The meeting is about to begin. Thank you very much, and welcome to the annual briefing uh, by the African Regional Economic Communities to member states and the United Nations entities on silencing the guns in Africa, the nexus between peace and security, governance and development. This meeting is co-chaired by, by Ambassador His Excellency Ambassador Mohammed Zain Sharif, the permanent representative of Chad to the United Nations, and by myself. I will make some introductory remarks, followed by uh, remarks by Her Excellency uh, Mrs. Fatuma CDB Kaba, the permanent representative of Guinea to the African Union and representative of the chair of the African Union Peace and Security Council for the month of October. Then uh, I will hand over the chairmanship of the meeting to Ambassador Sharif, who will lead us to the end uh, of the discussion. This Excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, representatives and permanent representatives of the uh, distinguished representatives of the African regional economic communities, um, um, ambassadors, commissioners, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, my great pleasure to welcome you to the seventh annual high-level briefing by the African regional economic communities to the United Nations, as well as to the Africa Week 2015. As a sign of the strong partnership between the United Nations and the African Union, I'm delighted to welcome Her Excellency Ms. Fatoumata uh, Sidibe Kaba, Chair of the African Union Peace and Security Council for the month of November, and thank her for joining us here today. We appreciate your strong support for the Africa Week. I, old, I would also like to express my gratitude to the Permanent Observer Mission of the African Union to the United Nations, and in particular to Ambassador Tete Antonio for the continued support and close partnership with OSA. It is this partnership that has enabled our offices to organize these important briefings uh, year after year. Ambassador Mohammed Zain Sharif, Permanent Representative of the Republic of Chad to the United Nations, I would like to express our appreciation to you for co-chairing and co-organizing this briefing. We are looking forward to your remarks as uh, you are not only representing Africa on the Security Council uh, together with Nigeria and Angola, but also because you are uh, intimately familiar with the subject matter having previously served as permanent representative of Chad to the African Union in Addis Ababa as well. Excellency, ladies and, um, and gentlemen, I would like to use these remarks to contextualize our discussions today within wider efforts to bring about peace and prosperity to Africa, and then highlight issues that I think could help guide our discussions today on how to silence the guns in Africa. 2015 is a landmark year. On the 70th anniversary of the United Nations, we have witnessed the historic adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, as well as the launching of three key processes that significantly affect Africa, namely the review of the United Nations peace building, the review of the peace operations, and the review of the implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace, and Security. At the continental level, African heads of state and government adopted Agenda 2063 and its first 10 years implementation plan. The synergies between the various reform processes are extraordinary, and great care has been exhibited, including by African member states, to ensure that contributions are, congru uh, are, are congruent and outcomes of various processes foster coherence and coordination. It is within the important context of these reforms that we have come together today to highlight the specific role the RECs can play in silencing the guns in Africa. We need to, we need to, uh, to be clear 
Silencing the gun in Africa is as momentous a task as it is worthwhile. It needs to be addressed at all levels and extends across the nexus of peace and security, governance, human rights, and development. To successfully address this nexus, we need more holistic and integrated approaches, greater policy coherence, and more sustainable and reliable financing. We also need to build even better and stronger partnerships. Over the last decade and a half, the African Union has built a comprehensive continental architecture in the pursuit of peace, governance, and development with the regional economic communities as its building blocks. The United Nations have supported this infrastructure, not least through the, the 10 years capacity building program, which is to be replaced by PAIDA, the United Nations AU Partnership on Africa's Integration and Development Agenda. The UN also continues to collaborate closely with the African Union and directs in many conflict prevention, mediation, and peacekeeping efforts in Africa. To this end, I welcome recent efforts and proposals to further strengthen the partnerships between the African Union and the United Nations, the AU and the RECS, and between the UN and the RECS as well. So we should also be frank with ourselves when discussing how to end conflicts in Africa. This is not the first time that a commitment was made to rid Africa of conflict. Any renewed efforts to end conflict should therefore be accompanied by a candid examination of why conflicts persist, despite our best efforts, and despite similar commitments in the past. This will help us focus on the most important challenges and enhance the effectiveness of our responses, thereby increasing the chances of achieving an Africa free of conflict. So what will it take to silence the guns. For one, we need to further strengthen and support key mechanisms to prevent and resolve conflicts, such as the African peace and security architecture and the African governance architecture. But we cannot wait until tensions rise. The best way to silence the gun sustainably and successfully is to build durable peace. For that, we need to build societies in which all citizens especially women and the youth, can fully partake. Societies that respect diversity and combat all forms of exclusion, which remains a major cause of conflict on the continent. It also requires institutions that are legitimate, transparent, and just, and which effectively delivers public goods to citizens. We need societies that safeguard and promote the rights of their citizens and protect them from harm. We need leaders that end the winner-takes-all mindset that per pervades too much in Africa's politics. And we need a political class that puts the well-being of their country and their people ahead of their partisan or personal interests. Finally, <clears throat> we need to find a way to harness the natural resources of the continent for the benefit of its people and they encourage investment in jobs, education, infrastructure, agriculture, trade, and energy, among others. This will provide young people with employment and sustainable livelihood, and steer them away from migration, crime, and conflict. Not all of these factors can be successfully tackled in the next five years. Silencing the gun by 2020 will therefore require clear prioritization, strong focus on addressing proximate sources of conflict and time-bound tasks assigning distinct responsibilities. Excellencies, given their proximity to realities on the ground, the RECs are the first line of response in crisis situations. They are also the most immediately affected by violent com conflicts and its repercussions. We are therefore looking forward to hearing from the RECs today about how they see their role in silencing the gun while facing many of the same challenges each region in Africa is different. It will be extremely useful to learn from each REC how they assess the prospects of silencing the gun in their region. 
which conflict prevention measures they are carrying out to prevent new conflicts and what tools they are using to resolve existing conflicts. As no single organization can tackle today's security challenges alone, we would like to encourage our distinguished colleagues from the RECS to highlight areas in which the United Nations and the international community can support their efforts and would like member states on their turn to react to those assessments and to those proposals, including through supporting the efforts of the RECS. After hearing from the RECS, we will invite three senior officials and, um, and the notable experts on the regional and sub-regional cooperation to add their voices to the debate and help explore the RECS, with the RECS how cooperation between the UN and the AU, uh, uh, the AU and the RECS can be in, enhanced towards silencing the gun in Africa. We hope that today's discussion will lead to actionable recommendations and will generate messages that can contribute to the development of the continental framework on silencing the guns. Let me conclude by reiterating that the Office of the Special Advisor on Africa remains deeply committed to working closely with the AU, the RECS, and the African member states in support of silencing the guns in Africa and realizing the objectives of Africa's Agenda 2063. As today is only the first day of Africa Week 2015, I would like also to use this opportunity to invite you to the rest of the, of the high-level events on Africa's peace and development that will take place this week. I thank you for your attention. Now, it is my, my pleasure and honor to give the floor to Her Excellency, Mrs. Fatoumata Sidi Bey Kaba, the permanent representative of Guinea to the African Union and the representative of the chair of the African Union Peace and Security Council for the month of October, and also the chair of the, of the Peace and Security Council for the month of November in Addis Ababa. Madame. Merci bien, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much. Uh, Monsieur le Président, Mr. Monsieur le Co-président, co uh, Mesdames et Messieurs, Ladies and gentlemen, les représentants des organisations internationales of international et régionales, and regional organizations, et Mesdames et Messieurs les membres de la société civile, members of civil society, tout protocole observé. Permettez-moi de transmettre to express de les remerciements the gratitude de, du président du mois of the à son excellence, of this Monsieur Magid Abdul Aziz, sous-secrétaire général des Nations Unies, conseiller spécial pour l'Afrique, pour l'invitation adressée au président du mois Africa for the pour participer à cette session annuelle des communautés économiques régionales et de dire quelques mots and to say sur le thème du, de la session, de la présente session, session à savoir namely, faire taire les armes, le lien entre la paix, la sécurité, le développement security, et les relations entre l'Union africaine, les African Nations Unies Union, et les communautés économiques régionales and regional en vue de la réalisation de l'objectif so faire taire les armes à l'horizon 2020, 2020 en Afrique. In Africa. Le président du mois, euh, son excellence Rachid Ben Noules, qui, pour des raisons indépendantes de sa volonté, n'a pas pu être des nôtres, mais il m'a chargé personnellement de transmettre ses salutations à vous tous, doublées de ses excuses. To all of you, and Et also to le Conseil de paix et de sécurité se félicite de cette invitation qui témoigne de, de la volonté du secrétaire général des Nations Unies de renforcer la coopération et la coordination avec l'Union africaine dans la gestion des questions de paix, de sécurité et de stabilité en Afrique. And stability in et Africa. distingués invités, mesdames et messieurs, and je voudrais d'enjeu souligner like la vision de l'Union africaine d'œuvrer à l'avènement d'un continent prospère, euh, stable, intégré et libre de tous les conflits. 
le continent africain free comme vous le savez est richement doté de ressources naturelles et dispose d'une population dynamique qui est à 70% constituée de jeunes appartenant à la tranche d'âge située entre 10 et 30 ans. Cette population aujourd'hui représente un potentiel important pour le développement de l'Afrique. Et cette population qui avoisine autour de 200 millions est telle, cette population a très importante, peut être une force dynamique pour impulser le développement de l'Afrique, comme elle peut être aussi une menace pour la paix et la sécurité. Le défi que représente l'accroissement rapide de la population doit aller de pair avec un développement socio-économique accéléré en vue de satisfaire les besoins fondamentaux de l'ensemble du continent. Le développement de l'Afrique sera conditionné par l'amélioration des conditions de vie des populations, de cette population jeune, l'amélioration de leurs conditions de vie en matière de revenus, en matière d'accès à l'éducation, en matière d'accès à la santé, en matière euh, d'amélioration du bien-être général de la population. Euh, la prévalence des conflits au cours des dernières décennies a gravement affecté les efforts de l'Afrique de réaliser tout son potentiel en matière économique et de satisfaire les besoins croissants de sa population. Vous comprendrez aisément pourquoi l'Afrique souhaite urgentement faire taire les armes à l'horizon 2020. Et en effet, c'est sur cette toile de fond que la célébration du 50e anniversaire de la création euh, de, du 50e anniversaire de la conférence de la création de l'OUA, la conférence des chefs d'État et de gouvernement a adopté une déclaration solennelle dans laquelle est exprimée sa détermination d'œuvrer à l'avènement d'une Afrique débarrassée de tous les conflits de faire, taire une réalité, de faire taire, de faire de la paix une réalité pour toutes les populations du continent et de libérer le continent des guerres, des guerres civiles, des violations des droits de l'homme, des catastrophes humanitaires et de violents conflits et de prévenir le génocide. Les chefs d'État ont également pris l'engagement de ne pas léguer le fardeau des conflits à la prochaine génération d'Africains et de travailler en vue de mettre un terme à toutes les guerres en Afrique d'ici l'an 2020. Et vous comprendrez aisément les conflits, les causes, les conséquences des conflits sur les projets d'intégration, sur les programmes d'intégration en Afrique. Si je prends par exemple la CDAO, et il y a 40 ans que la CDAO est créée, et la CDAO aurait accompli davantage de progrès en matière de développement, en matière d'intégration, si elle n'était pas confrontée euh, aux guerres, aux longues guerres en Sierra Leone, au Libéria, en Côte d'Ivoire, au Mali, et les crises à répétition dans les pays de la sous-région, en Afrique même, en Centrafrique, en RDC. En Somalie, est-ce qu'on a envisagé, est-ce qu'on a évalué les conséquences néfastes, l'impact néfaste de ces conflits en termes de pertes en vie humaine, en termes de retard dans le développement, en termes de, 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 de masse, de, de, de population, de déplacement massif de population vers d'autres régions. Toujours dans l'esprit même de la déclaration solennelle, le 24 avril 2014, le Conseil de paix et de sécurité a fait de sa 430e réunion une session publique consacrée à l'examen du thème « Faire taire les armes, conditions préalables à l'avènement d'une Afrique libérée de tout conflit à l'horizon 2020 ». Lors de la dite session, nous avons convenu 
de la nécessité de procéder à l'adoption rapide de réponses appropriées et courageuses aux alertes rapides qui annoncent les conflits et les crises potentielles. Nous avons par ailleurs lancé un appel en vue de mieux renforcer tous les mécanismes de diplomatie préventive en vigueur et de procéder à l'opérationnalisation complète de toutes les composantes de l'architecture africaine pour la paix APSA et avons appelé à sa totale opérationnalisation, notamment la force africaine en attente et sa capacité de déploiement rapide. Nous reconnaissons la responsabilité prépondérante du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies pour ce qui concerne le maintien de la paix et de la sécurité sur le plan international. Toutefois, nous soulignons la nécessité de renforcer le partenariat stratégique entre le Conseil de paix et de sécurité de l'Union africaine et le Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies et insistons dans le même temps, sur le fait que c'est aux États membres qu'incombe en premier lieu la responsabilité d'assurer la protection de leurs citoyens et de veiller à leur stabilité nationale. Par ailleurs, nous devons également investir davantage dans nos capacités de prévention des conflits. L'un des nombreux moyens d'y parvenir serait s'attaquer efficacement euh, aux causes profondes des conflits violents sur notre continent. Toutefois, cela ne sera possible que si et seulement si nous avons une perception commune de la définition et des réponses apportées à ces causes profondes de conflits et crises qui affectent notre continent. Les meilleures pratiques que l'on peut retenir des pays stables comprennent entre autres la bonne gouvernance qui renvoie également à la gouvernance démocratique, l'ouverture, la transparence, la responsabilité et l'obligation de rendre compte ainsi que la promotion et la protection des droits de l'homme. L'implication des populations dans la gestion de la chose publique et l'inclusion. Tous ces éléments constituent des jalons essentiels pour la mise en place d'une société prospère, pacifique et stable. En effet, l'approfondissement de ces valeurs dans la durée par nos États membres aura certainement un effet positif sur la capacité de notre continent à prévenir les conflits avec lesquels nous grappillons aujourd'hui. D'autre part, les États membres qui ne l'ont pas fait encore sont invités à signer, à ratifier et procéder à la domestication des cadres juridiques et instruments normatifs actuellement en vigueur à la réconciliation nationale. La réconciliation nationale constitue un élément essentiel à la recherche efficace de so solutions durables aux conflits et crises en Afrique. À cet effet, la conférence des chefs d'État et de gouvernement de l'Union africaine, dans sa résolution 501, a baptisé la décennie 2014-2024 la décennie Madiba Nelson de réconciliation en Afrique. L'on ne soulignerait jamais assez l'importance de la réconciliation en matière de construction nationale, de résolution des conflits et de promotion de la guérison nationale et de la justice. Je voudrais également souligner la nécessité d'adopter des mesures et pratiques novatrices en vue de régler plus efficacement la question de la prolification des armes légères et de petits calibres ainsi que d'autres types d'armements et de promouvoir la signature et la ratification universelle du traité sur le commerce des armes. Nous devons en outre désigner et humilier publiquement les fournisseurs, les bailleurs de fonds, les facilitateurs, les transitaires et les récipiendaires des armes illicites et ce dans le but d'éradiquer le phénomène de la, de la prolifération 
illicites des armes qui continuent de se déverser dans les zones en conflit. Toutefois, ces mesures ne seront efficaces que s'il existe une coopération, une collaboration franche au sein et entre les membres des Nations Unies, de l'Union africaine, des communautés économiques régionales et des mécanismes de prévention et de résolution des conflits. Le CPS a récemment organisé une retraite à Abuja, au Nigeria, sur le thème « Renforcement de la coopération et de la collaboration entre le CPS et les CER, les mécanismes régionaux, dans le domaine de la promotion de la paix, de la sécurité et de la stabilité en Afrique. » L'Afrique accorde beaucoup d'importance au rôle des CER dans la promotion de la paix, de la sécurité et la stabilité sur le continent et par extension sur le reste du monde. La retraite a adopté des conclusions importantes sur ces questions. Si ces conclusions venaient à être mises en œuvre, elles contribueraient grandement, grandement à renforcer davantage la capacité du CPS à s'acquitter plus efficacement du mandat qui lui a été dévolu. Monsieur le Président, vous venez tout à l'heure d'évoquer le rôle Chairman, you spoke euh, des communautés the role économiques régionales et les mécanismes régionaux dans la gestion des conflits. Et cette coopération, les CER constituent vraiment le, 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 la, la pierre angulaire de l'architecture africaine de paix et de sécurité. Parce que les CER, les conflits éclatent généralement dans leur zone. Ils sont directement affectés par les effets dévastateurs de ces conflits et ils sont, elles, 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 ils sont les premiers à prendre des mesures pour faire face à, à ces conflits et de rendre compte au, au Conseil de paix et de sécurité. Mais conformément au protocole, le Conseil de paix et de sécurité a la primauté dans la promotion de la paix, de la sécurité et de la stabilité en Afrique. Donc, le CPS reconnaît la contribution importante des Nations Unies, mais les CER ont la responsabilité de rendre compte directement au Conseil de paix et de sécurité. Mais s'ils sont dépassés par l'ampleur des conflits, ils peuvent le, le CPS jouera un rôle de premier plan dans la gestion de ces conflits. Et le CPS reconnaît la contribution importante des Nations Unies et du Conseil de sécurité dans la promotion de la paix, de la sécurité et de la stabilité en Afrique. C'est pour cette raison que notre Conseil de paix et de sécurité et le Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies se retrouvent chaque année pour discuter, entre autres, des défis qui affectent la paix, la sécurité en Afrique et la façon de mieux les surmonter dans un esprit de collaboration, se fondant pour cela sur notre partenariat historique qui ne cesse de se développer. Pour conclure, je vous invite tous à vous joindre à l'Afrique dans les efforts qu'elle ne cesse de développer en vue de faire taire les armes sur le continent et de l'accompagner dans son processus de développement économique. Sur ce, je vous remercie and here, de votre très aimable thank you attention. For your very kind attention. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kaba, for, um, for this uh, uh, very, very comprehensive reflection of the views of the Peace and Security Council of the African Union. In fact, this is a good uh, start of the, of the meeting, which have already started a little bit late. So uh, before handing it over to the uh, to my co-chair, I, um, I was consulting with him uh, minutes ago that we need to cut a little bit of the time allocated for each speaker from 10 minutes to be seven minutes, so that we will be able to hear also the views from member states and other, uh, others in the room and to enter into this kind of interactive uh, dialogue. 
Um, having said that, I will hand over to His Excellency Ambassador Sharif. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much. Monsieur le Secretary General Adjoint au Conseil uh, Spécial pour l'Afrique. Uh, Secretary General Special Advisor for Africa. Uh, Margaret Abdelaziz. Um, Madame uh, la Présidente du Conseil de Paix et de Sécurité. Uh, uh, President Madame of the et Monsieur Peace and Security General, Council. Ladies and Gentlemen, Secretary General, Representatives of the regional Mesdames economic Monsieur. communities, ladies and gentlemen. Tout d'abord remercier le secrétaire May général I first adjoint of all thank the uh, ASG and Special Advisor for Africa, Ambassador Margaret Abdelaziz, d'avoir ouvert la présente séance d'information annuelle des communautés économiques régionales africaines aux États membres et entités the Nations Member Unies States and uh, bodies belonging to the United Nations, and I am um, delighted to be here chairing together with him. Madame I should also like to thank Your Excellency, Kaba, Madame Fatima Tassidibé Kaba, Kaba, the permanent representative of the Republic of Guinea to the African Union and uh, chair of the African Security Council for November. Uh, I'd like to thank her for what she said, invités, and I wish a very warm welcome to all our guests, and I should like to thank you all Avant for being nos here échanges, today. Je Before nous we start our discussions, sessions, I would like to remind you that we will have two sessions, the first dealing with addresses from the regional communities and the agenda silencing arms in Africa. Uh, arms in Africa by 2020, and then the second will be on uh, enhancing cooperation between the African Union, um, uh, the UN, and the SAR in order to silence arms in Africa by 2020 against the backdrop of the implementation of the first 10-year plan of the AU 2063 plan. We shall have some uh, interactive discussions after the presentation of the two sessions, de de session and then at the end of the interactive sessions, uh, we shall Donc, be hearing from the two co-chairs. Uh, so, this is the first session of the chairing. You have the Secretary General and the representatives regional, of the economic, uh, 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 regional economic communities will be speaking. Avant cela, je voudrais juste faire Dans le même sillage des orateurs now, qui m'ont précédé, just before we move on to that, I would like to take my cue from previous speakers uh, and just make a few comments on the first Afrique, issue, silencing arms in Africa, sécurité, the links between peace, security, governance and development. Le conflit et l'insécurité touche aujourd'hui la quasi-totalité des régions du continent africain, brisant la vie d'un nombre incalculable de personnes. À la menace que constituent les conflits armés classiques s'ajoute la guerre et attaque de plus en plus violentes imposées par des groupes armés et groupes terroristes tels que Akmi, Mujahou, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, Détenant des armes de plus en plus sophistiquées et déstabilisant les États. Les conséquences de ces menaces sont désastreuses pour de nombreux pays africains confrontés à de gros problèmes de sécurité, des dizaines de milliers de civils tués, des centaines enlevés et des millions de déplacés internes et de réfugiés dont l'impact est ressenti au-delà des frontières africaines. Ces conflits perdurent à cause des armes à feu qui circulent en Afrique et contribuent à sa destruction. 12 milliards de balles sont produites chaque année à travers le monde, soit près de 2 balles par habitant de cette planète. About, uh, le marché mondial des munitions destiné aux armes légères et de petit calibre the, uh, pèse davantage que celui des armes à feu et des armes légères, avec of, uh, environ 4,3 milliards de dollars par an. Dollars, uh, per year. Les flux de munitions sont okay, difficiles yeah. à suivre, ce qui accroît encore 
Le risque de détournement au profit d'utilisateurs illicites ou non autorisés. Dans certaines régions d'Afrique, l'on estime que plus de 50% des armes de petit calibre et des armes légères en circulation sont utilisées de manière illicite, non seulement dans les conflits, mais également pour des vols à mes armes, le crime organisé et le terrorisme. Comme il a été rappelé avant moi, lors du 50e anniversaire de l'Organisation de l'Unité africaine et de l'Union africaine, les dirigeants africains se sont engagés à mettre fin à toutes, je cite, à toutes les guerres en Afrique d'ici à l'an 2020. Fin de citation. À cet égard, la nécessité de faire taire les armes en Afrique est reconnu comme un élément clé pour la réalisation d'un développement humain durable sur le continent dans le cadre de la stratégie de développement à moyen terme telle qu'énoncée dans la position commune africaine sur l'agenda de développement post-2015, mais aussi de la vision de développement à long terme inscrite dans l'agenda africain 2063. Si des efforts de l'Union africaine et de CR concentrés sur la prévention des conflits, la reconstruction post-conflit, les stratégies d'intervention et de développement visant à faire taire les armes en Afrique à l'horizon 2020 sont à encourager. Beaucoup reste à faire, notamment pour mettre en œuvre des systèmes de gouvernance solides, inclusifs et efficients. De même, pour atteindre l'objectif fixé il est essentiel de créer et de renforcer une synergie et une complémentarité entre et parmi les architectures pertinentes de l'Union africaine pour l'intégration et le développement continental avec la forte et active participation des communautés économiques régionales. La 400 30e réunion du Conseil des paix et de sécurité de l'Union africaine, tenue le 24 avril 2014, consacrée au thème « Faire taire les armes », condition préalable pour réaliser une Afrique exempte de conflits d'ici à 2020, a aussi relevé certaines préoccupations et demandé à la Commission de l'Union africaine d'entreprendre une étude globale sur le flux des armes illicites vers l'Afrique et de lui soumettre les conclusions de cette étude. Le CPS a également souligné la nécessité urgente d'élaborer une feuille de route à faire examiner par la conférence en vue de soutendre les actions nécessaires à la réalisation de l'objectif d'une Afrique exempte des conflits d'ici à 2020 et à appeler toutes les parties prenantes à contribuer à ces processus. Le 70e anniversaire de l'Organisation des Nations Unies, marqué par l'adoption de l'agenda 2030 pour le développement durable, constitue une occasion pour réfléchir sur la persistance des conflits armés en Afrique qui mettent en péril son développement. La présente séance qui vient à point nommé nous permettra de procéder à une analyse approfondie des causes aussi bien endogènes qu'exogènes des conflits sur le continent et d'envisager des actions collectives en vue de promouvoir la paix et le développement durable en tenant compte des liens étroits fondamentaux qui existent entre eux. Dans cette optique, il convient de saluer les efforts de l'Union africaine et des CR visant à concrétiser l'architecture africaine de paix et de sécurité et la mise en œuvre de l'agenda 2063 dans son premier plan décennal. C'est pour appuyer ces efforts dans le contexte du partenariat entre l'ONU et les organisations régionales et sous-régionales que le Tchad, lors de sa présidence du Conseil de sécurité, a fait adopter en décembre 2014 la déclaration présidentielle sous la cote S bar PRC bar 2014 il convient également de saluer tout particulièrement 
Le récent rapport du secrétaire général sur les causes des conflits et la promotion d'une paix et d'un développement durable en Afrique. En son paragraphe 89, le secrétaire général des Nations Unies a écrit, je cite, « Il est essentiel » que l'ONU apporte un appui accru aux organisations régionales et sous-régionales africaines pour les aider à concrétiser l'ambition de faire taire les armes, comme le prévoit la déclaration présidentielle du 16 décembre 2014, dans laquelle le Conseil de sécurité s'est déclaré prêt à aider l'Afrique à y parvenir et à demander à tous en particulier aux entités compétentes des Nations Unies de se mobiliser à ses côtés, notamment en envisageant d'élaborer un plan d'action quinquennal réaliste à l'appui de l'objectif d'une Afrique exempte des conflits d'ici à 2020. Donc, euh, avant de passer... Euh, la parole, euh, je voudrais Before euh, I give the tout floor simplement, to the next speaker, I would nearly, je voudrais, euh, vous aurez tous reçu euh, le document de réflexion qui a été circulé préalablement à cette réunion par le bureau du conseil spécial was, um, pour l'Afrique pour orienter nos interventions. À cet effet, je voudrais attirer votre attention sur les quelques questions clés à prendre à considération dans nos échanges. Et là, je m'adresse certainement aux secrétaires généraux et représentants des communautés économiques régionales, puisqu'il est très important qu'on puisse répondre à ces questions pour mieux comprendre la situation et envisager des solutions La première question, avons-nous collectivement analysé de façon appropriée les sources, la dynamique et les manifestations des conflits armés en Afrique et les menaces émergentes Avons-nous élaboré des outils appropriés, des lignes directrices et des critères assortis de délais pour y remédier Quelles sont les priorités principales et les mesures spécifiques prises par les communautés économiques régionales afin de faire taire les armes d'ici à 2020 dans leurs régions géographiques respectives. Que peuvent faire les communautés économiques régionales pour contribuer davantage à accélérer l'atteinte de l'objectif consistant à faire taire les armes d'ici à 2020, notamment en renforçant les mécanismes de prévention existants et en améliorant la bonne gouvernance Comment pouvons-nous aborder de façon concrète et efficace la circulation et le commerce illicite des armes ainsi que les activités illégales des pourvoyeurs, des financiers, des facilitateurs, des destinateurs comme les acteurs non étatiques Comment pouvons-nous améliorer la coopération entre l'ONU, l'Union africaine et le CER en ce qui concerne l'objectif spécifique consistant à faire taire les armes d'ici à 2020, y compris dans le contexte de l'agenda 2063, du l'Union africaine, Nations Unies sur l'intégration et le développement de l'Afrique et de l'agenda mondial 2030 pour le développement durable. Comment les Nations Unies et les partenaires multilatéraux peuvent-ils soutenir davantage les efforts et mesures spécifiques de CER consistant à faire taire les armes d'ici à 2020. Enfin, dans l'état actuel des choses, et si nous en tenons aux efforts et initiatives en cours, est-il logiquement possible de faire taire les armes d'ici à 2020 Que faire si l'échéance est intenable Donc, je rappelle que chaque intervenant a 7 minutes. Sans plus attendre, je donne la parole delay, donc, à Son Excellence, M. Ibrahim Sani Abani, secrétaire Ibrahim exécutif Sani, de la SINSAT. Uh, exactly, of the SINSAT. Uh, Monsieur le représentant du président en exercice uh, de la SINSAT, représentant permanent du Tchad auprès des Sinsat, Nations Unies, Monsieur le Conseil spécial pour l'Afrique, représentant le secrétaire général Africa, des Nations Unies, Monsieur le représentant de l'Union africaine, Madame la ministre présidente Madame du Conseil Minister de paix et de sécurité de l'Union africaine, Mesdames et Messieurs les représentants permanents auprès des Nations Unies, Mesdames et Messieurs 
Messieurs les représentants des communautés économiques régionales, Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais, à l'entame de mon propos, remercier les organisateurs de cette semaine de l'Afrique dans le contexte du 70e anniversaire des Nations Unies pour avoir convié la CINSAD à partager ses points de vue, ses réflexions durant euh, ce briefing sur le thème « Le silence des armes en Afrique, lien entre la paix, la sécurité, la gouvernance et le développement ». Je voudrais saisir cette occasion pour féliciter vivement le Bureau du Conseil spécial pour l'Afrique auprès des Nations Unies pour cette excellente initiative qui, a, qui à l'occasion de la 70e de la célébration du 110e anniversaire de l'Organisation des Nations Unies. Aussi, cette rencontre intervient à un moment où l'Afrique traverse une crise paradoxale qu'on peut aisément résumer par croissance En effet, l'Afrique fait montre d'une bonne croissance économique, mais en même temps, elle connaît une multiplication des crises et conflits plus graves les uns que les autres, plus complexes les uns que les autres, impliquant des acteurs politiques, ethniques, confessionnels, etc. Paradoxalement, l'Afrique enregistre une croissance soutenue de plus de 5%, en même temps qu'elle est confrontée, je le disais, à la pauvreté extrême, à une augmentation des morts et des déplacés dus à des conflits et à des crises. Alors, comment faire pour changer cette situation Comment faire pour taire les armes pour que les acquis actuels deviennent durables et irréversibles Comment faire taire les armes pour que le continent puisse concrétiser les aspirations contenues dans l'âge de 2063 de Je voudrais partager avec vous la perspective de la CENSAD pour faire face aux préoccupations de notre continent face aux crises et conflits que traversent le continent. Face aux crises que traversent les différentes régions, les communautés économiques régionales se sont mobilisées pour mettre en place des stratégies et des programmes. Il s'agit principalement de l'engagement des huit communautés économiques et régionales reconnues par l'Union africaine dans la prévention, la gestion et le règlement des conflits. D'une part, la reconstruction post-conflit et les initiatives de désarmement, de démobilisation et de réinsertion socio Dans la crise malienne, par exemple, nous avons noté avec satisfaction la mobilisation rapide de la CEDEAO et de la, de la CEDEAO, de la CENSAD et de l'Union africaine pour appuyer euh, la mise en place de la MISMA ou aussi pour accompagner le pays jusqu'à la signature de l'accord historique du 21 juin 2015 qui a mis fin officiellement au conflit. Dans la situation de la politique centrafricaine, nous avons observé la même mobilisation pour empêcher la dégradation de la situation et amener tous les protagonistes à la table de négociation. S'agissant du Burkina, la CENSAD s'est inscrite dans une dynamique d'accompagnement des acteurs de la transition par des séminaires de renforcement de capacité et des conseils aux autorités de la transition. Dans la crise qui secoue la région du lac Tchad, la CEAC et la CENSAD ont joué un rôle dans l'accompagnement des États pour la mise en place de la force mixte multinationale par les États de la Commission du, du, du bassin du lac Tchad plus le Bénin. La CENSAD a ainsi mis à la disposition euh, du Niger, du Tchad et du Bénin une enveloppe de 1,5 million dollars pour les accompagner dans le déploiement des contingents nationaux à cette force mixte. C'est pour toujours mieux accompagner les États que la CENSAD a élaboré une stratégie holistique dite stratégie de sécurité et de développement de la CENSAD comportant des actions sur la sécurité des personnes et des biens, l'accès aux opportunités économiques pour un développement intégré, l'appui au secteur de production et la promotion de la démocratie. Stratégie de la bonne Cette stratégie découle de la déclaration sur la paix, la sécurité, la stabilité et le développement dans l'espace sahélo-saharien, adoptée par les 24 chefs d'État de l'espace sahélo-saharien participant au sommet suscité par le président Idriss Déby Itno pour la relance de la CENSAD au lendemain de la révolution du 17 février en Libye, pays de siège de la CENSAD. 
uh, for uh, uh, new missions with the launch de dealing paix, with peace and, de peace sécurité, and security. We cannot talk of on peace, security and stability. We cannot silence weapons without dealing with the fundamental determining issue of the proliferation effet, circulation of la illicit weapons. La circulation the illicit proliferation des armes de calibre circulation of a small arms and light weapons has devastating effects on the civilian population and in particular its women and children who are the main victims. The Secretary General of the UN, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, said on the occasion of the thematic debate on the proliferation of weapons that over the last decade more than 250 conflicts have broken out throughout the world and these have led to the death of more than 55,000 millions of people and displaced more than 33 million. This number has been unknown. Ces crises et conflits compromettent les efforts des États dans le sens de la réalisation des objectifs du millénaire pour le développement. Je formule le vœu que la stratégie post-2015 adoptée par les Nations Unies connaisse une meilleure évolution et cela interpelle les États, les organisations internationales et les ONG. Pour faire taire les armes, il faudra nous remobiliser autour de la restauration et de la culture de la paix conformément à la charte de l'UNESCO. Qui dispose que les guerres prennent naissance dans l'esprit des hommes, c'est dans l'esprit des hommes que doivent être élevées les défenses de la paix. Il s'agit de poursuivre l'éducation à la tolérance conformément à la déclaration de principe sur la tolérance de l'UNESCO du 16 novembre. We have to continue with tolerance education pursuant to the UNESCO Declaration on the Principles of Tolerance of Victory in 1995. States and governments must be encouraged to achieve political and economic good governance to consolidate justice, the rule of law, but also to provide equality of opportunity and civic education for citizens. If the continent is to achieve all these aspirations as a priority, issues of peace and security il n'y a plus de conflit frontal entre les États en Afrique. There is no longer any frontal clash amongst African states that is welcome that, but we must be concerned about the new threats to national and regional peace and security, in particular here, transnational organized crime and terrorism. Because of the weakness of states, the lack of resources and the absence of operational cooperation between African forces of security and defense, and the failure to respect the embargo on weapons, we see a proliferation of terrorist acts carried out by Boko Haram, Dansar Sharia, Dansar Beit Al-Makdis, Dar Shabab, etc. C'est pour cela que j'appelle la communauté internationale à accorder un intérêt soutenu à la lutte contre tous les groupes terroristes conformément aux résolutions pertinentes adoptées dans le cadre de l'Union africaine, des communautés économiques régionales, du Conseil de sécurité, etc. Il faut aussi que tous les États s'y engagent avec la même franchise. On doit cesser le double langage parce que les États ont souvent deux fers au feu. On tient des discours vertueux dans les forats internationaux et les services de l'ombre font autre chose, suscitent et soutiennent tel ou tel groupe rebelle qui finit par devenir incontrôlable. Les crises et conflits en Afrique sont en fait la manifestation de lutte d'influence et de positionnement géostratégique des États de la région, voire d'ailleurs. Mesdames et Messieurs, pour neutraliser définitivement ces groupes terroristes et assurer la paix et la sécurité, il importe, à notre sens, de renforcer l'autorité et les fonctions régaliennes de l'État, de renforcer les capacités des forces de défense et de sécurité en termes de formation, de logistique, de télécommunication, de faire fonctionner l'échange et la coordination opérationnelles entre les forces de l'État de la région, 
d'obtenir l'adhésion des populations dans la lutte contre le terrorisme en associant les chefs traditionnels, les leaders d'opinion et la société civile. Soutenir l'Union africaine et son programme frontière qui a pour vocation de renforcer la coopération administrative transfrontalière, notamment dans le domaine sécuritaire. Enfin, engager à tous les niveaux des réflexions approfondies sur les causes de l'adhésion de ces jeunes Thought must be given to the reasons leading young people, men and women, to be so attracted by these deadly terrorist ideologies. I would like to conclude by saying how important it is to increase cooperation between the EU, the regional mechanism, and the United Nations. Cooperation must be the key word. Only in this way can we achieve the aspirations of Agenda 2060. Et appelle à la consolidation du comité de coordination Union africaine, Banque africaine de développement, CER et Commission économique Je vous remercie de votre intervention. Je remercie le secrétaire général de la CINSAT de son exposé. Et avant de passer la parole à l'orateur suivant, je voudrais en votre nom à vous tous saluer la présence dans la salle de Mme Vineta Diop, envoyée spéciale de l'Union africaine pour les femmes, paix et sécurité, ainsi que à monsieur, au docteur Abdel well Fattah Moussa, Fattah directeur Moussa, des affaires politiques donc, affaires du Bureau des Nations Unies Nations euh, auprès de l'Union africaine euh, qui est actuellement donc, euh, sur l'écran via VTC et qui suit nos débats. Screen, et see, je leur souhaite également une très chaleureuse bienvenue. Et sur ce, je voudrais passer euh, la parole à l'orateur suivant, il s'agit de son Excellence M. Sindizo Ndema Ngoenia, secrétaire général du marché commun de l'Afrique de l'Est et de l'Afrique australe, Comessa. Merci summarize my intervention as follows. Um, firstly, regarding the causes of conflict, of conflicts, I think it is important that we should have an accurate diagnosis of the root causes of these conflicts. And if one were to say, in a nutshell, what are the causes, it boils down to poor governance in all its respects. Um, and this is also evidenced by the fact that uh, most of the conflicts that we are seeing today are within countries. They are intrastate. They are not interstate. Um, although they are intrastate, what's happening is also that they spill over into neighboring countries. They become a regional problem. They become an international problem. Um, you know, and so forth and so on. Um, now, regarding the question as to whether we have uh, the necessary uh, institutions, policies, the architecture, structures, systems to address these conflicts, I would uh, humbly submit that yes, we do. And that uh, we have the African Union peace and security architecture. We have uh, the sub-regional organizations uh, with their intervention brigades and also their programs to deal with these issues. You but then the question is, question? why is it that uh, these conflicts you know, continue? Notwithstanding the fact that um, the continental early warning systems, the sub-regional uh, organization, or ex early, early warning systems, uh, do provide uh, that early warning information uh, on the uh, potential conflicts. And I think the uh, answer to that lies in uh, the implementation. 
in that when it comes to implementation, although uh, the political will is there, but if the political will is there without the means to implement those decisions, then we are stuck and we cannot move forward. <coughs> Examples abound um, uh, in our region, uh, the commerce, commerce region, and also Africa, in the sense that uh, you will have uh, a conflict uh, that is simmering, it breaks out, and uh, the decision is taken to deploy peacekeeping uh, forces, but they are not able to be deployed because uh, the African Union or the sub-regional organizations or the RECs do not have the means, they don't have the money, the resources, you know, to do it. So these are the challenges and this is why it would be important for the African Union and also the RECs to begin to look for sources of funding uh, for this. Um, because if you don't act on these conflicts uh, timelessly, then we have a problem on our hands. Now, very quickly with regard to what does COMESA do, um, we are newcomers in this business as a regional organization in the sense that uh, we only started having a peace and security program in uh, 1999. And what we have done is to develop that program to respond to the uh, whole spectrum of the conflict life cycle. cycle. We have, however, taken into account that uh, there are other uh, organizations, uh, RECs within Africa and other organizations that are better placed uh, than us, carved our niche around economic and other structural factors of conflict, resulting in an architecture that includes the following. Uh, the structural prevention of conflict through the establishment of a conflict early warning system which is focused on structural vulnerability assessments. Uh, this COM1 is anchored on a composite target variable, the Comesa Peace and Prosperity Index, CPPI, which is designed to identify structural drivers of conflict for respective countries. After several years of developing this model and defining the indicators, Comesa disseminated its country structural vulnerability assessment this year and made several recommendations to member states. We are, however, cognizant that the challenge of linking early warning uh, to early response is very real for Comesa because while member states perceive the importance of addressing the structural factors, they may choose to address or to prioritize what they foresee as more urgent um, uh, matters at the expense of the structural factors. Secondly, we have uh, uh, support. We support the management and resolution of existing conflicts through our committee of elders that are mandated to support my office with preventive peacemaking, peacemaking assignments, including uh, pre-election um, um, uh, observation and also election observation to mention but a few. Um, obviously, our committee of elders may submit their briefs to the various, you know, committees, including the summit. But as I've indicated, the problem is one of implementation. The third aspect that we have is the support the post-conflict reconstruction by exploiting the nexus between trade, development, and conflict prevention. In this regard, COMESA has been supporting the border communities in the Great Lakes uh, region to enhance cross-border trade using the COMESA simplified regime. Equally important is that COMESA is supporting the development of infrastructure at the borders, including border markets. In addition to supporting interaction through trade, these programs are intended to provide livelihoods to the border communities and reduce the recruits for conflict activities. Uh, fourth, we support, um, uh, uh, we, we have support to address security. And in this regard, we are contributing to the regional maritime security by focusing on money laundering crimes. This is a structural solution that goes beyond attempting to capture 
uh, pirates, which in itself is, import, is, is an important aspect, but once pirates are captured, then it is easy for the new recruits to be drawn from a wide pool of unemployed youth. However, if we address the financials of piracy, then we are making it difficult for them to operate at all. Although this is done to prevent maritime security insecurity, addressing money laundering crimes is also um, a part of uh, uh, preventing transponder crimes such as terrorism, drug and human smuggling. Uh, last but not least, COMESA is also supporting democratic governance, which is done through elections of, uh, election observation, you know, and so forth and so on. Excellencies, although I commend our continent for its accurate identification of the factors that contribute to conflict, my confidence in the tools, in the tools that have been developed to prevent and resolve conflicts, I am not as confident of the region's preparedness to end all wars by 2020, unless we can address uh, several factors among them, these include, firstly, I believe we need to invest a lot, more, a lot more resources in structural prevention of conflicts. Currently, most resources that have been allocated to peacekeeping efforts, currently most resources have been allocated to peacekeeping efforts with much less resources allocated to structural conflict prevention. While on the subject of resources, it will also be important for Africa to raise money, to raise more of its resources to prevent and resolve conflicts. Secondly, we need to be cognizant of the numerous actors and initiatives that exist with the objectives of preventing and resolving conflicts, and we should therefore pay more attention to issues around collaboration. In this regard, I do believe that the United Nations and its agencies, together with the African Union, should take a leading role to coordinate the existing efforts, and in the same token, uh, rigorously apply the principle of subsidiarity uh, to which we should all adhere to. Third, recognizing the complex complexity of conflicts, it will be important to engage the less traditional stakeholders, such as the non-state actors and parliamentarians, who have a very crucial role to play. Civil society organizations are near the ground, and they are in a position to identify factors uh, to conflict at an early stage. Civil society organizations also have got strength in advocacy and have traditionally played the watchdog role very effectively. This is something that COMESA identified as areas 201. Uh, in response to the decisions of the COMESA authority, COMESA commenced the accreditation process uh, to in order to incorporate the civil society organizations to its decision-making processes. Uh, what needs to be done, therefore, is to build their capacity to enable them to engage constructively with policymakers and therefore provide po positive contribution to conflict prevention and economic development goals of the state. Excellencies, there is also a need to enhance coordination, not only between the UN, the AU, the REX, but also but with regard to the various actors in the UN system in supporting Africa. In addition, there is also need to increase the effectiveness of resource and assistance provided by the UN and international partners and to be aligned to Africa's priorities. Last but not least, we have to enhance communication and information sharing between the UN on one side and the AU and the REX on the other. On illicit weapons and arms trafficking, African countries have made significant efforts to prevent and eradicate the illicit trade of small arms. However, limited resources remain a challenge. Consequently, the support by international partners should include aid programs that target illicit arms trade, funding the destruction of small arms, and securing uh, arms storage facilities. Further support is needed to assist African countries in upgrading their capabilities inter alia by providing equipment training to control land borders and seaports and to effectively combat trade in small arms, there is also need for transparency and accountability with regard to those countries that produce small arms and which end up um, uh, causing this havoc. In conclusion, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I believe 
that the UN can play a very important mapping and coordination role because there is currently a multiplicity of actors and programs that need to be channeled towards the goals of conflict prevention and economic development. If it is clear about what the different actors are doing, then it will be possible to exploit the synergies for greater impact and perhaps also possible uh, to realize the noble vision of silencing the guns by 2020. I thank you for your kind attention. Je remercie, I uh, thank I Monsieur Sindizo Ndema, Secretary General du Commissaire de son exposé. Et je pense qu'il a soulevé une question très pertinente à laquelle les orateurs suivants essaieront de répondre. Nous avons l'architecture de paix et de sécurité de l'Union africaine, nous avons le CR. Mais pourquoi est-ce que le conflit perdure toujours Et Je pense que c'est une question qui mérite une réponse. Et je donne à présent la parole à Monsieur Charles. Nizo Roger, secrétaire général adjoint de la communauté des États de l'Afrique de l'Est. Monsieur Charles, vous avez la parole. Merci, Excellences. Dans l'intérêt du temps, je vais dire ce que nous avons observé. Permettez-moi de partager la perspective de l'Afrique de l'Est. En 2014, le ESC a conduit un assessment de sécurité de l'Afrique de l'Est de l'ESC. Notre focus était sur la was the conflict dynamics, the emerging threats, and the need to adopt commensurate measures. The outcome of the assessment informed the updating of the ESC regional strategy on peace and security, which was adopted by the Council of Ministers in November 2014. The study also provided the bedrock upon which the ESC protocol on peace and security was built. The EC Regional Peace and Security Architecture addresses itself to security threats in two broad categories, crime management and conflict prevention management and dissolution. The approach takes cognizance of the multiple membership to RECs within the Great Rifts and the Horn of Africa region and the density of regional organizations with peace and security mandate, which provide a strong basis for complementarity, both vertically and horizontally. Excellencies, Silencing the guns 2020 within the ESC context is premised on addressing root causes and sources of grievances that, that have allowed conflict to thrive and take violent dimensions and promoting trade through free movement of people. Arising of the security assessment I've talked about, it was evident that governance challenges remain the key source of grievances and conflict with the resultant effects of underdevelopment manifested in high levels of youth unemployment. The focus now is on adopting and implementing approaches, appropriate measures. For example, we're in the final stages of adopting the ESC Good Governance Protocol. Its pillars include promoting constitu constitutionalism and the rule of law, promoting human rights and access to justice, promoting democracy and electoral pro practices, fighting corruption, and promoting economic governance. Our multi-dimensional strategy on youth empowerment and the action plan on social development are being implemented. Secondly, the ESC early warning mechanism is operational and generates potential preemptive information requiring action. And accompanying it in January 2015, the ESC summit, head, summit of heads of states established a panel of eminent persons to promote preventive democracy, democ diplomacy. The fruits of such avenues came into play just recently when the ESC at the highest political level was handling the Burundi crisis. Thirdly, we acknowledge the defense sector as a key pillar to protecting democratic gains and cascade good government practices developed at regional level to national levels. We therefore have deliberate programs for continued strengthening of cooperation in the defense sector through joint exercises and training serves to reduce tensions and enhance confidence among the partner states. The collective approach to operationalization of the East African Standby Force as a tool for stability and security stands out among the gains. 
The region's collective will towards stabilization of Somalia reaffirms the depth of this partnership in the face of difficult and at times tragic events. We are adopting security sector reforms through development, harmonization, and adoption of regional best practices. These are aimed at addressing historical skepticism and restoring confidence of the populations to other security agencies and also enhancing accountability and oversight over these organs. We are also sharing security sector centers of excellence among the member states. Further, harmonization of laws which embody international best practices and practices is being resolutely implemented. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the challenges African states face today defy traditional geographical boundaries. Given the negative forces against stability, defeating them requires a high level of cooperation, information sharing, and joint preemptive and reactive actions. Interreg and intra-reg cooperation is necessary, so it strengthened cooperation within the continental security architecture. For the RECs, enhanced vertical and horizontal cooperation and interreg as well as interreg cooperation is crucial. At the wider level, we already have the African Peace and Security Architecture and instruments on which to anchor the cooperation. We have instruments such as the protocol relating to the establishment of the EU Peace and Security Council, the protocol on the relations between the AU and the RECs, and the MOE between the AU and the RECs on peace and security. How do we then deliver this? One, resolute implementation of provisions in the instruments guided by principle of variable geometry. Two, promotion of exchange of good practices and collective capacity building measures among the regs. This is because confronting such transnational threats as terrorism require a multi-dimensional approach that ensures close regional cooperation. Three, establishment of reciprocal organs on matters of peace and security that can work closely with the AU and Security Council on regional security issues. Fourth, empower the RECs to take a greater role and responsibility in, in addressing security challenges within their membership. And lastly, but not most important, address good governance and fundamentals. Excellencies, as we move towards forward, addressing the role of non-state actors suppliers of illicit arms, financiers, etc., becomes more and more paramount. Small arms and light weapons is the single most important facilitator to violence and an accessory to undermining legitimate governments, the rule of law, and human rights. The implementation of the United Nations Program on Action on Small Arms, which is anchored on the various regional small arms protocols and convention and the UN arms tracing instrument. We need to resolutely adopt and implement collective measures that render them inactive. At the EAC, we are focusing on addressing the casual factors like governance failures, where they drew their allegiance and legitimacy. Our implementation of the EAC custom union and common market is bound to promote youth employment opportunities and inclusiveness in the economic sectors, as well as implement a number of policing measures. The strength of these negative forces will be reduced. We also continue to promote issue-based politics which, with the objective of marginalizing ethnicity, which has continued to be exploited by defensive forces that thrive on such crevices to promote narrow sectarian interests. We acknowledge the concerns that still inhibit signing and ratification of the small arms of the Arms Trade Treaty. Efforts, therefore, should be invested in creating greater understanding and political buy-in of, in of this instrument, given that it remains so far the most comprehensive and counter-proliferation tool that addresses small arms proliferation and the manifestation in all dimensions. There is concern on the loss of interest in small and right arms issues in recent times. We are therefore launching an appeal. Can we reverse this trend and upscale implementation of regional instruments on matters of small arms? Can we collectively mobilize the communities and, society, and civil society to play a key role in raising levels of awareness and buy-in? As we acknowledge the need for increased regional and continental level, taking greater responsibility towards funding security initiatives in Africa through increased qualitative investment in security, let's also say we need to upscale the cooperation and collaborative efforts aimed at ensuring 
that financial pledges made by partners are timely paid. Indeed, maybe, maybe the next session could look into the outcomes of the ongoing OSA-led evolution of the realization of commitments and the practical proposals on the way forward. As we do this, we also need to assess the issue of illicit financial flaws, the many billions which complicate the delivery of service on the continent. Further, greater cooperation must lie in the devolution and empowerment of communities. There are also essential ingredients critical to ownership and sustainability of development interventions. Cooperation in this area is critical, and the condition of the efforts by the UN, the AU, and the RECS need to be strengthened. UN agencies have big ex experiences to share, and our CSE will remain committed to supporting UN efforts, including greater advocacy by the Office of the Special Advisor on Africa. I thank you all. Je remercie M. Charles Njoronje de son exposé. Et je donne à présent la parole au Dr. Sembin Kozi Mholongo, secrétaire exécutif adjoint chargé de l'intégration régionale auprès de la communauté de développement des États d'Afrique australe, SADEC. Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will be brief um, to save time. <laughs> the issue of the link between development and peace and security is at the core of SADAC program of integration. Um, we have a, a program of economic integration and we have a program of political integration. And political integration is a condition for economic development in SADAC. Therefore, the uh, summit head of state, when they meet annually, there are two uh, agenda items. One. That's the first one, is the issue of peace and security. Second, is the issue of economic development. Now, having analyzed, uh, let me say that uh, um, for the past uh, uh, several years, they have been meeting and they've been saying, we do have sustainable peace in Sadak and we always report uh, in the, uh, this forum that uh, SATAC is satisfied uh, with the conditions that exist, that have been created to ensure that uh, the uh, Southern African region does develop. The main conditions that have been creating pockets of instability are as a result of uh, weak uh, 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 institutions, um, especially those that are supposed to uh, ensure that uh, democracy uh, is adhered to. Um, and therefore, and mainly this is, uh, comes from the <coughs> immediately when there are elections and immediately are disputes. So SATAC focus on this, and one of the instruments that was created is the uh, norms and guidelines for democratic elections in SADAC. That was approved by all member states and is strictly enforced and it has to be adhered to. If you are one of the SATAC member states and you feel that you are not prepared to adhere to this, you are, you are literally saying that I don't want to be a member of SADAC. That is very strict. Now, the institutions that have been created um, at a, a regional level to monitor the implementation 
of these uh, norms and, uh, and, and guidelines of democratic elections in SADC. Um, I think some of them exist also in the other regs. Um, um, uh, for instance, we have the SADC uh, election observation mission, which I think it exists also in other regs. Um, we, um, I, I must say that uh, 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 all these structures, um, uh, we have the SADAC election observation machine that whenever a country has elections, it will notify SADAC and the system will be mobilized. And we have uh, the SADAC election observation uh, uh, advisory council. This structure goes some time before the election starts to investigate and develop a report that will ensure or, or, or that the country is ready. Uh, um, but over and above all this, uh, there are pockets sometimes. And when there are pockets, there is a machinery that springs up. Uh, we have the mediation, uh, um, uh, and there's a panel, uh, and we have mediators. Uh, in some cases where mediation is not required, if the conflict is not sharp, we have the facilitators. Uh, there are countries that have gone through this. Uh, I think um, uh, one of them is uh, DRC and uh, Madagascar, and we are very happy that these countries have actually returned um, although uh, 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 these uh, uh, countries, they do receive hand-on, and they are still re receiving this hand-on uh, to ensure that the systems uh, are entrenched. In these uh, processes, uh, there are so many stakeholders that uh, participate. Uh, we have the parliamentarians uh, with their own structures, we have a civil society with their own structures. They are or they can come to alternative conclusions because they are independent. But what guides SADAC is the norms and guidelines for democratic elections in SADAC. That's what makes the determination. Um, Uh, I wanted to say that uh, this, is, this does not come cheap. Each year, we assess, and member states have to contribute, and it's, the lump sum is very big. They contribute, but we cannot uh, precisely determine how many conflicts are going to erupt and what the, the amount that will be required precisely. So in the middle of the year, when there is a very big uh, issue that has to be addressed, we will reassess and we will ask countries to contribute. And no country refuses. Because if instability returns, each and every country knows. It's not that it's that particular country that is involved directly, but all countries are involved. We do receive assistance from development partners, but primarily SATA countries have to fund these processes. And that's how they have been sustainable. It's because SATA actually foot the bill. I think uh, I must say that, uh, uh, as the EAC uh, has just said, we have learned and it was not a prescription, it's a learning process. That uh, where countries sometimes belong to different regional uh, groupings, like in the DRC, the approach we took was very effective. It was SADAC and the International Conference on Great Lakes. It was a double summit coming together, and they are still working on this to ensure that 
in the Great Lakes, there is peace. That learning is going a little bit further. Within that framework, there is discussion to say that maybe we need also to cooperate to deal with the Al-Shabaab. That's a discussion. And I think that kind of approach where regional economic communities work together, there is a possibility to deal with the issues. But it must be, you need to ensure that those that are working together are those that are directly, because they are issue of resources that we need, we need to pay uh, in order to make sure that this thing works. Uh, in fact, in the DRC, um, uh, we really uh, um, uh, we, we did work with the United Nations, MONUSCO, and uh, the fact that we, we really dealt with the problem. I think the input of all these stakeholders really we do recognize. But also we are building our institutions uh, in line with the African Union Peace and Security Architecture. I think my colleagues have alluded to this. Um, we have established the SADAC uh, uh, standby uh, brigade. Uh, we have been for a long time running the regional any warning uh, system. Uh, um, I think the colleagues have been saying the issue is about implementation. And the fact that I can always report to you, I'm reporting to you now, that there is peace and stability in SADAC is because we implement what we agree. Thank you. Je vous remercie, uh, Monsieur like Moulongo, de son exposé. Et je donne maintenant la parole au docteur Ibrahim Bokarba commissaire Ibrahim chargé de la politique et de la recherche macroéconomique auprès de la Commission de la Communauté des États d'Afrique occidentale, CDAO. Monsieur le secrétaire général, sous-secrétaire général des Nations Unies, Mon Excellence Maguette Abdelaziz, Monsieur le représentant permanent du Tchad aux Nations Unies, Madame la représentante permanente de la République du Guinée de Guinée to the African Union, Mesdames et Messieurs les représentants des Secrétaires Généraux et Représentatives de Je voudrais tout d'abord au nom du président de la commission de la CDAO, First of all, on behalf of the president of the ECOWAS Commission, His Excellency, um, au sous-secrétaire général like des Nations Unies, conseil spécial pour l'Afrique, son Excellence M. Special Advisor for Africa, His Excellency Maghred Abdelaziz, and uh, all those involved. Économique régionale in cette semaine the convening et surtout uh, à cette session qui se veut interactive uh, commission, dont le thème évoque l'importance des liens systémiques entre paix, sécurité et développement. Si nous nous référons à la déclaration solennelle du 50e anniversaire de l'Union africaine, on peut affirmer que c'est soutenu par l'ambition to the next generations in Africa and to put an end to all wars in Africa by 2020. It must be acknowledged that this is an extremely ambitious goal, given the gap sometimes between political will and the available uh, resources. I would refer to what the representative from... In a such context, reduce the arms to silence reste alors une condition sine qua non pour une Afrique exempte de conflit à l'horizon 2020. Ce thème a d'ailleurs inspiré le Conseil de sécurité et de paix et de sécurité de l'Union africaine qui, au cours de sa 430e session, a souligné la responsabilité de taille des communautés économiques et régionales et des États dans la lutte contre les causes profondes de conflits. En d'autres termes, il s'agit des faits générateurs qu'il faut analyser en profondeur. We have to analyze what is at the origin of everything. Uh, there is no gain saying that ECOWAS has very actively contributed to achieving 
the uh, objective of silencing guns by 2020. As we can see, if we look at uh, the following points, and we shall here answer the uh, questions that have been asked that are at the heart of our meeting. And looking at these, we really wanted to stick to the situation because there were very specific questions that were asked, and uh, we wanted to respect that. So what were the questions, firstly? What tools do we have in ECOWAS when it comes to West Africa? Deuxième question, now, sont les secondly, what are the specific measures adopted to, to silence guns in West Africa by Troisième 2020? Question, thirdly, que fait la CDAO pour accélérer la réalisation des objectifs fixés to à l'horizon 2020? Quatrième question. Fourth question. Quel est le lien qui existe entre paix, sécurité, stabilité, bonne gouvernance et développement? Cinquième et sixième question. Quelle Fifth coopération and entre les Nations Unies, l'Union africaine et les communautés économiques Quel accompagnement des Nations Unies dans ce processus working with the United Nations here. And I would add the question put by the uh, chair, the Ambassador Chad. Why is it that with all the means available to us, things don't work? So I'd just like to uh, answer these questions now. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, this is my answer to de quels outils la CDO the questions. Dispose what à cet au means de does ECOWAS have here uh, for helping la CDO, things in Western dans Africa? Dans well, des États membres pour l'atteinte des objectifs, notamment à travers le mécanisme de gestion et de règlement des conflits armés, we have, um, la coopération transfrontalière, regulation, la promotion de la gouvernance, la bonne gouvernance the, um, et des libertés fondamentales et des droits humains. C'est à travers ces outils uh, que la CDO and la Souvenez-vous. So this is what we would bear in mind. You have to remember that uh, when we come to Liberia and Sierra Leone and the outbreaks of violence there, I think this was referred to, these are the crises of, which are first-generation crises when we consider all the damage there. Then there's the crisis in Cote d'Ivoire and Niger and other crises, the emerging crises as they're dubbed. The region here is addressing these new threats, looking at maritime security as a problem, extremism, cross-border crime, uh, piracy, and the proliferation of the weapons. Now, to meet these threats, has adopted a certain provisions and we are still working ah, on uh, implementing these. Firstly, we have the conflict. strategic conflict prevention framework to help member states in combating the deep-rooted uh, causes Deux. of conflict that trigger them. Les armes and secondly, et les calibres, the Convention on Small Arms and Light Weapons is Trois. legally binding. Thirdly, we have the Integrated Maritime Strategy, which was adopted in 2014, and which is at present being implemented. Counter-terrorism strategy. Here again, we are Sahel, continuing to act here. There is the Sahel uh, strategy with its action plan. This was adopted in 2014 and again is being implemented. So, what are the specific measures we can look at at present when it comes to silencing guns by uh, 2020? What has ECOWAS done? May I just uh, refer to the control of the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in uh, 2006? La convention we have de la the CDAO convention which has been implemented uh, of the ECOWAS um, uh, agreement on small arms and light weapons and uh, other uh, annexed uh, instruments and legally binding and ones West. preventing the Cette proliferation of small arms and light weapons in West Africa. Under the convention here, we have many actions uh, which are being envisaged, firstly regionally and secondly nationally. So regionally, ECOWAS 
fosters joint uh, policies and strategies and cross-border cooperation. Au plan national, nationally, nationally, what we've done essentially is to establish, and this in all member states, national commissions uh, to combat the proliferation of light weapons. Dans les so there are national commissions and the specific de measures de on cross-border checks, um, national arsenals, the promotion of uh, culture of peace. Uh, all of these steps are being implemented at present faire, by ECOWAS. And to this end, ECOWAS has always done as much as it can, given its resources, to enhance uh, capacities nationally by making available uh, uh, equipment, um, material, financial support to, to enable priority actions to be taken as pursuant to the five-year action plan of the Convention. Excellence, mesdames et messieurs, Your Excellency, quelle est la troisième question Que fait la CDAO pour accélérer is there la réalisation des objectifs fixés à l'horizon 2020 Bien sûr, goals. la CDAO s'est dotée well, de cadres de prévention, it does have a des projets for et aussi it des initiatives projects. hardies. And uh, we have also taken le cadre uh, some quite des striking uh, uh, action. Une place de choix à la when it comes to conflict prevention, we emphasize à débarrasser uh, la région practical measures to des armes légères free et the region of light weapons and other illegal material and to prevent there being excessively stockpiled or illegally held in the region. Messieurs, les efforts régionaux so, consistent here, regional efforts, ladies and gentlemen, uh, consist in la sécurité physique des réserves stricter border control, guarding national arsenals and um, Nous promoting ces efforts transparency when it comes to the transfer of weapons. Formation, we have training workshops des and uh, capacity de building for those responsible for the border security. We provide equipment, uh, surveillance equipment, so uh, carry out an inventory of sites of weapons and munitions and create a database on small arms ailleurs, and light weapons. Avec de and then again, with the support of the African Union, ECOWAS in uh, 2014 launched a pilot project to collect weapons Mono involving the Manu uh, River Lutia Union and the Sahel region. So we're looking at those two zones there, those two areas, the Manu uh, uh, River and the Sahel. And by means of consciousness raising uh, and um, active work, uh, this pilot program has um, boosted capacities and involved uh, civil society and micro-development uh, projects uh, in exchange for the weapons turned in. Then ECOWAS has also strengthened existing instruments and adapted them to deal with the emerging new threats. And de here, de protocol we de la CDAO are reviewing the relevant protocol of ECOWAS on uh, prevention, the management uh, and resolution of conflicts, uh, democracy and good government. So we're doing this with participation. Ladies and gentlemen, despite the drop in armed conflicts, terrorism appears to be the new threat to peace and security facing us. Combating terrorism and all other forms of crime in West Africa has become a priority for all ECOWAS states. Now another question, what's the link between peace, security, stability, good governance and development? Well, I'm in a good position to address this as the commissioner responsible for macroeconomic policy. Experience has shown ECOWAS that when it comes to crisis management, we're talking of a first generation crisis here, Liberia and Sierra Leone, and then the crisis in Côte d'Ivoire, and uh, Niger more recently, and emerging crises, there's a very strong link between stability between stability in states and economic growth. Le Liberia, Let me give you an example. Leone, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, Côte d'Ivoire are today countries which uh, have been la through crises and which are driving growth in the region. La Côte d'Ivoire, since 2012, has a growth rate between 85 and 9.5%. And during the crisis, 
The uh, growth rates were negative. Again, uh, Sierra Leone is a striking example. Despite the Ebola outbreak, in 2014, the growth rate was 7%. So this means that the countries are extremely resilient. Obviously, there have been economic reform policies and uh, Yeah, better budgetary policies. All these have worked together, and with the return of peace and stability, these countries have been able to record high growth rates. Then there are the effects of the crisis, such as that in Mali. Everybody knows how complex it is. But the result of uh, this is economic deprivation. These are areas where the temperature more than 55 degrees, it's very hard to live there, and then there are uh, very poor social indicators. And this obviously only aggravates the situation, so the link is very What about cooperation then between the UN, the AU, and the regional economic indicators? How is the UN fait, help, yeah. de I wish de to underscore the principle of subsidiarity, et appropriation, uh, ownership rather, and complementarity. Uh, these must be the leitmotifs of our cooperation. La and may de la I mise en place raise the point first, of de establishing appropriate coordination mechanisms and sharing information. information. Sharing information is Deuxièmement, vital. La question Then, de la bonne day, articulation des rôles entre les Nations Unies, l'Union africaine et les CEA. Troisièmement, uh, African African la question du renforcement des capacités des organisations capacités régionales. Quatrièmement, le rôle important que doivent jouer les acteurs de la société civile played et by protagonists from civil society. society. And it's very important to involve civil society because uh, civil Alors, society representatives point, are close messieurs, to the grassroots. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to try le, to address the extremely tricky question put to us by our chair. That is, we've got les, many measures available to us, uh, African Union, etc., And yet, why do these conflicts continue? It's an extremely passionate point. Now, from ECOWAS's point of view, I'd like to put forward two uh, suggestions, two reasons for explaining this. First of all, there's a whole series of reasons, and on occasion it's hard to weight them appropriately. You know, there are several factors, economic ones, political ones, cultural ones, religious ones. What is the dominant factor? What sort of weight should we attribute to the various factors here? Then secondly, there are all the interests at stake. Sometimes there are zones of conflict, but they can be areas where there are important national natural resources. So there could be both internal and external interests at play, interfering with the situation here. And then, moreover, when you want to solve, to resolve problems, we have the political issues. People who haven't signed an agreement, but who hold the key to the situation, to halting things, Que je voulais ajouter and they are not in the official combination. Ce, voilà, so I would like to uh, halt there and thank you very much. <coughs> je remercie uh, le docteur Ibrahim Bokarba de son exposé. Et je donne à présent la parole à Mme Marie Chantal Boufoula, conseillère politique et diplomatique de la communauté des États de l'Afrique centrale, la CAC. Mme Marie Chantal, vous avez la parole. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. I thank you, Excellence, Monsieur le, le Sous-Secrétaire Général, Excellencies, Under Secretary General, Special Secretary General de l'ONU pour l'Afrique, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs, pour le protocole confondu en vos grades et titres. Je voudrais d'emblée vous présenter les regrets de son Excellence Ahmad Alami, Secrétaire Général de la communauté des États de l'Afrique centrale, qui, pour des raisons d'agenda, n'a pas pu prendre personnellement part à ses assises. Il m'a chargé de remercier l'ONU pour l'invitation adressée à la CEAC et pour l'initiative qu'il a organisée cette importante réunion sur la 
l'initiative Faire taire les armes en initiative marge de cette 70e session de l'Assemblée générale de l'ONU. Monsieur le Président, Assembly. malgré les efforts consentis, so les, a, euh, les avancées enregistrées, l'Afrique demeure confrontée aux crises et aux conflits Africa du fait, entre autres, de nouvelles menaces transversales, des problèmes de gouvernance, Problems of governance, les conflits électoraux, de la radicalisation de certaines couches sociales, sentiments lésés et des intérêts divers. As well as Dans cette perspective, l'Union africaine a adopté l'initiative Faire taire les armes comme l'un des projets phares de l'agenda 2063 et de son premier plan décennal. Dans cette perspective, les actions menées par la CAC sont en harmonie avec ce processus global africain, car les objectifs d'intégration sous-régionale et de développement économique définis par le plan d'action des négoces et le traité d'Abuja instituant la CEA ne peuvent être atteints sans un minimum de stabilité et de paix. C'est à cet égard que la CEAC a adopté un des cadres normatifs des instruments juridiques dans le cadre du Conseil de paix et de sécurité de l'Afrique centrale, notamment les pactes de non-agression, les pactes d'assistance mutuelle, le protocole relatif à la création même du Conseil de paix et de sécurité de l'Union africaine et les règlements de la Commission de défense et de sécurité de la force multinationale de l'Afrique centrale, FOMAC, et du mécanisme d'alerte rapide de l'Afrique centrale, MARAC, signé depuis 2002 à Malabo, le protocole de Kinshasa de 2009 sur la stratégie de sécurisation de l'espace maritime de la CEAC dans le golfe de Guinée, l'accord technique de Yaoundé de 2009 sur la sécurisation de la zone D entre le Cameroun, le Gabon, la Guinée équatoriale, Sao Tome et Principe. La convention de l'Afrique centrale pour le contrôle des armes légères et des petits calibres qui a été adoptée le 30 avril 2010 à Kinshasa. Elle est également appelée convention de Kinshasa. À ce titre, dans le domaine de la construction et consolidation de la paix, la CAC a mené les actions aussi après. Sans être associée, les interventions dans le champ des conflits armés récurrents en Afrique centrale à l'image de celui en République centrafricaine, où le COPAX a été mis en œuvre à travers la MICOPAX 1 et la MICOPAX 2, et qui ont permis d'éviter à ces pays de tomber dans le chaos avant que l'Union africaine, par la MISCA et la MINISCA de Nations Unies, ne prenne le relais. Dans le domaine de la sécurité et la sécurité maritime, elle a été l'une des premières communautés économiques af régionales africaines à se doter d'une stratégie de sécurisation de son espace maritime et elle a joué un rôle de premier plan dans l'élaboration de la stratégie de sécurisation des espaces maritimes du Golfe de Guinée à l'issue du sommet de la CEAC, de la CDAO et la CGG sur la sécurité et la sécurité maritime dans le Golfe de Guinée qui s'est tenu à Yaoundé en juin 2013 en exécution de la résolution 2039 du Conseil de sécurité de l'ONU et donc il y a une résolution dans le domaine de la gouvernance sécuritaire, la CEAC est engagée dans un vaste plan de lutte contre la prolifération et l'accumulation des stabilisants des armes légères et des petits calibres sur la base de la Convention de Kinshasa et Convention. Par ailleurs, nous supposons, nous, nous, la CEAC espère que L'entrée en vigueur de cette ECAS convention et la création des commissions de nationales de lutte contre les armes légères permettront de juguler cette menace. Dans le cadre de la lutte contre le terrorisme, la CEAC s'est engagée dans un programme mis en place par la CBNT pour apporter un appui aux deux États de la région, de la sous-région, le Tchad et le Cameroun notamment, qui Cameroon, euh, sont confrontés à cette guerre asymétrique contre ce, ce, ce groupe terroriste et qui paye un lourd tribut dans cette guerre impliquant des fonds initialement destinés à leur développement économique. Toutefois, cette action de solidarité However, a malheureusement été freinée par la récession économique actuelle. Les décisions prises au sommet de Yaoundé du 16 février 2015 n'ont pas été atteintes totalement. Mais un sommet conjoint, ce ACCDAO, sur la lutte contre Boko Haram, 
to combat Boko Haram is planned for the near future of Malabo so as to join means to combat Boko Haram and to adopt a regional strategy to combat terrorism. At the same time, along the lines of COPAX, ECAS is also working on other policies and topics, cross-cutting policies to promote peace and security. It is through the electoral action system supported by states committed to electoral processes in an African context where elections are one of the main sources of conflict. The promotion of the government in security through the reform of the security sector the implementation of border programs that are in line with those of the African Union, the promotion of human rights, the cooperation in the domain information. All of these are essential. Also, working towards Africa that is separated from conflict, this requires the prevention of these conflicts with the strengthening of international institutions de même que la consolidation de la paix, le relèvement après les conflits, le respect des droits de l'homme, les questions humanitaires, l'état de droit, la réforme du secteur sécurité, le désarmement, la démobilisation, la réinsertion, la réinstallation, le renforcement des capacités en matière d'alerte rapide, d'analyse des conflits, de dialogue, de médiation, de même que l'entraide judiciaire contre les trafiquants d'armes Judicial proceedings against traffickers and illicit trafficking of SLWs. Since Africa has become a center of terrorism, we must have a coherent security system so as to reach an end of this issue, this problem that is terrorism, and specific focus must be made on combating youth unemployment and the vulnerability of certain layers of society so that they are not radicalized following crises. We count on the international community to combat illicit financial flows, which lead to Enfin, corruption. La CAC, ONU, qui and finally, ECSS thanks to the United Nations Multiform, and the partners for the many types of support and hopes that there be considerable support in combating terrorism at the regional level to fight this threat focusing aussi. on people centered approach. It is essential to implement the existing mechanisms to combat maritime insecurity. L'absence de la criminalité organisée, les trafics, les multiples trafics, influent directement sur la stabilité politique, la paix et le développement. Et dans ce cadre, il est important de renforcer les capacités de portières et nous comptons donc sur les contributions des différents opérateurs de la mer qui utilisent les eaux du Golfe de Guinée, les compagnies commerciales, les compagnies de pêche et les pétrolières. Ce sont des opérateurs de pêche et de pétrolières. Ce sont des opérateurs de pêche et de pétrolières. Fishing companies and petroleum companies. We also count on the cooperation of the United Nations to better combat Boko Haram and to support the countries in the sub-region who are expending enormous efforts. And this should also be true for the resolution of crises in Burundi, in Sierra, and other countries. In conclusion, I would like to say that the UN, AU, partnership, including non-state actors and other partners will allow for improvement in combating weapons, the spread of weapons. But this requires strong support from the African countries themselves as well as commitment from the regional economic commission as reaffirmed in Agenda 2030 on the SDGs, adopted during the session of the UN General Assembly, and I thank you.
Je remercie Madame Marie Chantal Mfula de son exposé. Je donne la parole à l'orateur suivant en lui demandant d'être concis et bref parce que le temps est limité. Nous avons une deuxième session, même si elle est courte, et je pense qu'il fait un peu tard. Donc, sur ce, je donne la parole à M. Daniel Yifrou Sentayehu, conseiller principal chargé à la paix et à la sécurité auprès de l'autorité intergouvernementale au développement IGAD. Vous avez la parole. Monsieur le Chairman, Excellencies, all protocols observed, allow me to begin by conveying to you the greetings and best wishes of Ambassador Mahbub Ma'alim, Executive Secretary of IGAD, who is unable to be here with you this afternoon due to prior engagements. He has asked me to assure your excellencies of IGAD's firm commitment to work towards silencing the guns in one of the most conflict-prone region of the world, that is the IGAD region. As your excellencies are aware, the IGAD region has been and continues to be adversely affected by inter- and intrastate conflicts for several decades. This sad reality can be attributed to a number of factors. Our region is one of the regions of the world hosting the largest number of UN peacekeeping operations. This is in addition to the African Union mission to Somalia, which currently has more than 21,000 troop strengths. This is a direct consequence of the conflicts that have been going on between and within the member states of IGAD with all its negative consequences to the affected population and to the region at large. Silencing the guns of Africa, in Africa by 2020 is therefore a vision that IGAD embraces fully and devotes all its resources for the realization of the same. IGAD, as one of the RECs under the African Union, has since its revitalization in 1996, prioritized conflict prevention, management, and resolution as its main agenda. In the mid-1990s, IGAD member states embarked upon two parallel peace processes to seek solutions to the conflicts between North and South Sudan and the conflict in Somalia. When these conflicts defied all solutions and continued to cause incalculable loss of lives and displacement of huge population. Partner countries and organizations, including the African Union and the United Nations, rendered critical support to IGAD, to the igad led peace process, and the collective effort resulted in the signing of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement and the establishment of the transitional federal government in Somalia. Despite the numerous challenges and outstanding issues still being encountered in the full implementation of the peace agreement, and despite the numerous hurdles still outstanding in the peace building endeavors in Somalia, the IGAD led and internationally supported efforts in both peace processes, we believe was a success. The lessons that IGAD has drawn from this is that with adequate and timely support and assistance from the international community, RECs are better placed, are best placed and most effective in finding solutions to conflicts arising within the respective region. I should of course add that members of the REC should act in unison and pull in the same direction for the collective effort to bear the desired result. Excellencies, IGAD member states once again had to face the scourge of bloody conflict that erupted in December 2013 in the newly independent state of South Sudan. The IGAD Assembly of Heads of States and Governments immediately intervened to arrest an escalation of the civil war and succeeded in securing a ceasefire agreement within a few weeks. After a long and arduous effort, and thanks to the IGAD Plus endeavor, a peace agreement has recently been signed between the government and opposition of South Sudan. The implementation of the peace agreement may continue to face several hurdles. However, the first and most important step in terms of ushering in 
an era of peace and stability in South Sudan has been laid down. Through a collective and timely action and after garnering the support of the international community led by the UN and the African Union, IGAD Azarek has demonstrated its resolve and capacity to do its part in terms of silencing the gun in the region. Following each intervention in peacemaking, IGAD has demonstrated that for a regional effort to succeed, the unres unreserved political support as well as financial and technical assistance of the partner countries and organization is absolutely critical. I wish to underline that due to lack of requisite resources and institutional capacity, IGAD's peacemaking endeavors have been conducted on ad hoc basis. The ad hoc approach, as would be expected, had its flaws and weaknesses. Taking lessons from its own experience and with a view to effectively address future challenges, IGAD has established as and is in a process of strengthening a conflict early warning mechanism, CWARN, and a mediation support unit, which will in the future provide the institutional support for IGAD's peacemaking and peace building missions. In 2012, IGAD transformed its capacity building program against terrorism into an IGAD security sector program. In so doing, it has pos positioned itself to assist its member states build their capacity to combat transnational organized crimes, including terrorism and violent extremism in a region that is immensely affected by these emer emerging global threats. Through its political program and working in close col collaboration with the African Union, IGAD has developed a protocol on democracy, governance, and election. The protocol is awaiting the signature and ratification of the member states, and once that is secured, the member states would have at their disposal a yardstick to compare their own respective performance against the regionally accepted principles, procedures, and norms. IGAD believes that all these measures will contribute towards the continental agenda of silencing the guns by 2020. Since January this year, IGAD Secretariat has embarked upon the development of a comprehensive five years strategy. The peace and security sector forms an integral part of this strategy and is being developed with full participation of our member states. National and regional baseline studies have been conducted with a view to identifying the sources, dynamics, and manifestations of armed conflicts in the region. The IGAD peace and security strategy will be adopted before the end of this year. And it is envisaged that the strategy will lay down a clear guideline and implementation modality for the region collectively to achieve the continental and global targets related to peace and security. As one of the RICs, IGAD works in close consultation and coordination with the AU in all peace and security related matters. IGAD is also a beneficiary of the African Peace Support Program under the African Peace Support Architecture. In order to create synergy and, and collaboration, IGAD together with the UN Department of Political Affairs and the UN Office to the African Union have jointly developed a framework agreement. The framework agreement is expected to be signed at the, at the conclusion of a high-level dialogue scheduled to be held in Djibouti next month. The objective of the IGAD UN high-level dialogue is to strengthen cooperation between the two organizations on peace and security and to consolidate partnership modalities in conflict prevention and peace building. We in IGAD believe that the target set to silencing the guns by 2020 and the Continental Agenda 2063 as well as a global 2030 agenda for sustainable development are achievable and we pledge to work in earnest towards their realization. I thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Euh, nous arrivons ainsi au terme de la première session. Euh, les contributions ont été euh, riches en informations. Nous aurons euh, l'occasion d'échanger lors de la session interactive après la seconde session qui sera présidée par euh, le sous-secrétaire général et le conseiller spécial pour l'Afrique, l'ambassadeur Maghed Abdelaziz, à qui je passe la parole, puisqu'il va co-présider la deuxième session. Thank you very much, Ambassador Sharif, for um, brilliant uh, stewardship in, in leading the discussions in the second session. Now we have a very severe problem with the time frame, uh, so that's why I'm going to limit uh, interventions, with your permission, to three to five minutes of each of the speakers. So uh, to get ready, please, for that, in order to allow for some questions and answers with the floor and uh, some interactive discussion. I would like to start by giving the floor to Mr. Abdel Fattah Moussa, the Director of the Political Affairs uh, in the United Nations Office to the AU, who is coming to us uh, via the VTC in the screen, and uh, to start by thanking him for staying uh, too late. It is now 12.20 in uh, midnight in Addis Ababa, and, um, and, uh, and thank him for the commitment for Africa and for Africa Week. You have the floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, yeah, Your Excellency, and uh, on behalf of uh, Tybrook ASG Political Affairs and uh, uh, UNOAU in Addis Ababa, we would like to thank you very much for this initiative. Uh, like you said, uh, time is our enemy here. Uh, you know, so I, I just want to be very brief and then, uh, you know, go straight to the point. And, you know, to say that when we are talking about silencing the guns, I think uh, we have two aspects of it. We have the situation where we need to, to silence the guns when they are already firing. And we have got a lot of them, you know, throughout the conflict that we see today on the African continent. And I think IGAD, uh, representatives and then uh, 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 EAC and others highlighted some of those challenges. There is um, also the, you know, situation of uh, um, terrorism that every speaker has talked about, you know, that uh, we are also, you know, dealing with directly. And there are also electoral-related violence, you know, on the continent. And I will say that uh, all our interventions in this area are actually mitigating, you know, the crisis, mitigating the crisis. And I think there is the second aspect of uh, silencing the guns, you know, that is uh, all strategies and measures that we have to adopt collectively in order to ensure that the guns don't fire in the first place. You know, and, you know, that is the uh, conflict prevention mediation activities that, uh, you know, we are, uh, you know, having. Um, the UN office, you know, uh, to the African Union is here to be something like a link, uh, you know, with OSA uh, and also with the various UN agencies with the African continent, that the AU and its regs and regional mechanisms uh, in the area of peace and security. That is what we are here. And having observed the dynamics of conflicts in the region, uh, we need to interrogate some of the um, and the lion, uh, re, uh, what are the factors, um, you know, in our relationship, in particular the concepts of subsidiarity, comparative advantage, and all that. And that uh, uh, usually a subsidiarity principle may not work in all situations, you know, and that uh, in a particular conflict situation, the sub regional organization may be the best to uh, lead, you know, the international efforts to try to, uh, you know, mitigate the consequences. And in some instances, the AU may be the better, you know, partner or the United Nations, depending upon their degree of leverage and then, you know, a lot of other factors within it. You know, and I think uh, the conflicts in Sudan, South Sudan, in Burundi, which is ongoing now, uh, in Burkina Faso recently, all demonstrate some of these facts that we have. 
you know, so since 2014, uh, the UN has been working very closely with the African Union with the, uh, with the purpose of developing a framework called the AU-UN, uh, you know, joint framework for um, enhanced partnership in peace and security. Uh, during the just ended General Assembly, it, uh, the Secretary General and all the, you know, system within the UN agreed that this framework will have to be um, enhanced, you know, to encompass the entire UN system, and it will also have to encompass the whole AU system. And when we are talking about the AU system, I think we also imply the, what is it, the regional, uh, sub-regional organization. And the purpose of this is to move from a uh, step-by-step approach, the principles of subsidiarity, and then the transitions from sub-regional to continental to the international level to the policy of jointness in peace and security in order to deal more effectively with the crisis that we are, you know, having today. You know, so, uh, you know, what does it mean by that? You know, that is the UN system that is with our failed presences, with headquarters and others, uh, with all the agencies that are in the field, will work jointly with the various departments of the African Union, you know, uh, throughout the conflict cycle. We are talking about joint uh, vulnerability assessment, you know, uh, you know, programs, uh, horizon scanning, you know, right before at the onset of crisis, and then going through them in a coordinated and joint fashion. That is actually what this framework is about. So within that jointness, uh, based on the leverage that each uh, of our partners has, we will have to decide within, you know, that jointness uh, who actually has the best chance of leading the process and the others also uh, following within, you know, a common framework towards resolving, you know, the crisis. And we feel that if we are able to achieve that, you know, then we are already, you know, halfway, you know, towards dealing with it. There are challenges, you know, with it because because of um, proximity and other issues, sub-regional organizations are usually the first to intervene in crisis. But if we uh, adopt the jointness principle and that we are able to start right from the conflict prevention you know, level, then uh, it is possible you know, for us to reduce the time lapse between the interventions of various organizations. And uh, a whole lot of meetings are taking place, you know, within this framework. Linked to that is also the very important relationship between the AU and the REX. Uh, we assume that the regional economic communities are the building blocks of the African Union. But this only happens when it comes to uh, the APSA, that is the African Peace and Security Architecture, and for that matter, uh, you know, under the uh, African Standby Force, uh, whose validation is going to take place in the Amani exercise in South Africa, uh, you know, in about a week's time now, to validate, uh, you know, the, 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 the operational status of the African Standby Force. But beyond that, uh, the key institutions of decision making at the UN is the UN Security Council, at uh, the AU is the AU Peace and Security Council. But we all know that the sub regional organizations are only observers when it comes to decision making. So processes are ongoing, you know, to make sure the red voices are heard more within, uh, you know, the UN decision-making process so that decisions that are taken at the continental level can get greater traction at the lower level. And we are, you know, uh, supporting that. Uh, UN is also helping very much in the ongoing mitigation processes. Uh, you know, like uh, when we are talking about terrorism and other things, al-Shabaab in Somalia, the UN is very involved uh, providing expertise in programs of de-radicalization and de-integration, uh, you know, peace 
uh, what education, you know, programs, and also helping the MNJTF, in, uh, you know, against Boko Haram in West Africa, you know, with the uh, development of the concept of operation and also infusing uh, human rights due diligence policies and other UN practices. UN has uh, a lot of assets in terms of expertise that they can learn to these organizations and that it can only work within, you know, this framework of uh, jointness that we are talking about. You know, I think finally I would like to conclude that we can talk a lot about uh, jointness, about the effectiveness, but, uh, 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 you know, uh, when you reduce it to practicalities, it is actually the issue of resource mobilization. You know, it is the resources, and that is why we feel that the whole PIDA process and then the agenda 2063 implementation and then the uh, you know what the sustainable development goals agenda will you know think very creatively as to how resources within PIDA and other tech can also reach the regions in order for to build capacities at the grassroots level in order to enhance uh, you know uh, what is the joint efforts towards uh, you know conflict prevention you know which is key in this uh, you know particular uh, you know uh, stage of our you know uh, uh, development as a global community, where the REX, uh, the African Union, and the United Nations have to work as one, and you know, instead of working in silos, and that is the goal that we are going towards. And uh, we hope that with the cooperation of everybody, we can, you know, actually gain a lot of traction, you know, going forward in terms of uh, joining forces to silence the guns. I thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Musa. We gave you extra about five minutes in order to finish because you stayed with us to that late hour in Addis Ababa. Thank you very much for your contribution. The next speaker is brief comment from Ambassador Kaba, the permanent representative of Guinea to the, and the chair of the African Union Peace and Security Council in Addis Ababa. Merci bien, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very euh, Monsieur much, le Président, mon Chairman. intervention concernera la, le renforcement de la coopération entre l'ONU, l'Union africaine et le CEF afin de parvenir à l'objectif de faire taire les armes d'ici 2020 dans le cadre du premier plan décennal de la mise en œuvre de l'agenda 2063. L'agenda 2063, un des projets importants de l'Union africaine, susceptible d'apporter une grande contribution dans le projet continental de faire taire les armes en Afrique. L'agenda constitue un grand projet pour nous, les Africains, car nous nous engageons à le mettre sur la route pour transformer définitivement l'Afrique pour qu'elle devienne capable de répondre à tous les besoins so de son peuple. Et dorénavant, l'Afrique doit arrêter de continuer d'être un terrain de conflit violent avec ses conséquences néfastes. Le continent est énormément pourvu de ressources naturelles et humaines, alors elle a la capacité de se transformer. Ça a été longuement débattu lors de cette réunion. Et après des consultations et des préparations intensives, les organes politiques de l'Union africaine ont adopté le troisième document de l'agenda, à savoir le premier plan de mise en œuvre décennale en juin 2015 en Afrique du Sud. Ce document fait suite à l'adoption des deux autres documents par le sommet de l'Union africaine en janvier 2015 à Addis Ababa, permettant à l'agenda 2063 d'avoir trois documents principaux, à savoir le cadre de l'agenda 2063, sa version populaire et le plan de mise en œuvre décennale. En ce qui concerne le document cadre et de l'Union africaine, trois, le, le, de l'Union africaine couvre trois grands domaines à savoir la vision pour l'Afrique 2063, qui explique l'Afrique que nous voulons en 2063, et un cadre de transformation indiquant ce qui doit être fait, ainsi que des actions concrètes à réaliser dans le cadre d'une stratégie de mise en œuvre du document cadre. Un autre document important est le premier plan de mise en œuvre décennal. Ce plan qui a été élaboré à partir du chapitre 6 du document cadre vise à définir les domaines prioritaires, fixer les objectifs spécifiques pour fournir des propositions, des stratégies au niveau régional et continentales pour les dix dernières années à venir pour chacune des sept 
take aid, uh, looking at each of the aspirations the here that here describes the institutional uh, uh, scenario and uh, the major uh, uh, guidelines that all the stakeholders nationally and continentally must follow. It indicates potential sources of, of funding, requirements for strategic capacity in order to communicate with African citizens so that there is ownership and an outcome from the agenda. The first implementation plan has seven sub-chapters and six annexes covering the purposes of the qui sont essentiellement des sous-ensembles et ceux contenus sort of dans les documents cadres, uh, to the ainsi in que the les projets phares, une matrice so des résultats pour les aspirations, des questions de mise en œuvre telles que les principes directeurs et les rôles. Une fois de plus, et au fin de cette réunion, les questions relatives au programme visant à faire taire les armes sont décrites dans le document intitulé « Projets clés de l'agenda ». Ces projets phares sont le réseau intégré de trains à grande vitesse, une vitrière d'université africaine, la formulation d'une stratégie de produits de base, la création d'un forum annuel l'établissement uh, en 2017 des zones continentales de libre-échange, le passeport africain et la libre circulation des personnes, uh, la mise en œuvre du grand projet du barrage uh, IPA, uh, le e-network uh, panafricain, uh, le silence des fusils d'ici 2020, la stratégie spatiale, la création d'un marché unique de transport aérien, enfin la création d'une institution financière continentale africaine. Je tiens à souligner que c'est difficile pour les jeunes africains et l'Afrique de mettre en œuvre des it is difficult for the African Union de to implement such leadership and engagement without politique. being assured of Let a critical success factors la into which politique. L'état développeur leadership and capable political, uh, commitment la participation, uh, l'intégration uh, 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 et l'autonomisation des citoyens, to une approche these, participation, des integration and empowerment of citizens, an approach de la which is a results-based revitalization of strategic planning, ensuring that the 2060 agenda is part and parcel of the African Renaissance, that uh, Africa can face take its destiny into hand, in hand. Les inégalités sociales, There are risks le crime organisé, le trafic de drogue, les flux financiers liés, la mauvaise gestion des diversités, l'extrémisme religieux, l'ethnicisme, la corruption, l'échec dans l'exploitation des dividendes démographiques, l'escalade du diversité, le maladie, les risques climatiques et les catastrophes naturelles, les chocs externes tels que ceux causés par les forces du marché mondial. Je voudrais toutefois souligner que tous les défis évoqués Uh, uh, natural disaster risk and disruption si from outside, uh, such si as the, on the global market. I would emphasize that all of these challenges can be overcome if everybody works together. I would say, ladies and gentlemen, despite all these challenges, the major task for the execution of plan de Sénat, qui malgré les objectifs de domaine prioritaire, les cibles, les stratégies de mise en œuvre des projets. It includes objectives, Je ne peux conclure mon allocution sans ter and, um, remercier au nom du Conseil de paix et de sécurité les communautés well économiques régionales, les Nations Unies et la communauté internationale en général, ainsi que la société civile pour le soutien qu'ils apportent à la mise en œuvre de l'agenda 2063, commençant par le premier plan de Sénat. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci beaucoup. Uh, for this remark, um, I uh, would now give the floor to uh, the last but not least speaker of our list, Mr. Luis uh, Gnagbe, the advisor to the chairperson of the African Union Commission uh, on the Rex, and request those member states or our sister organizations to the United Nations who would like to take the floor to push the button so that we can maximize the use of the remaining time after his statement. Mr. Gnagbe, please. Mesdames et Messieurs, avec votre permission, je vais être très, très court, très, très, très court, pour deux raisons. La première raison, parce que par rapport au temps qu'il nous a imparti, et la, la deuxième raison, sans faire exprès, ma patronne, la Mme Kaba, a un peu lu mon discours, donc uh, um, <rire> on ne s'est pas consulté. Really, uh, hein. Les causes des conflits, the, uh, nous les connaissons. Uh, uh, les mécanismes qui sont mises en place, on était donc cité dans le pas, pas 
Les rex font donc sur le terrain un travail considérable et énorme, mais pourquoi cela ne marche pas Pourquoi cela ne marche pas Alors que tout est fait pour que tout puisse bien marcher. Il y a la, la, la résolution des, des conflits, mais je crois aussi qu'il faut donc travailler en amont sur, sur les, les, les préventions des conflits. Avant de terminer, je vais donner une seule piste. Je crois que, que tout le monde oublie. Nous avons un système, nous avons une institution qui est en place, mais à mon sens, elle n'est pas beaucoup exploitée. C'est le Maïev. Il une étude considérable. Si on prend la peine de lire les, les, les résolutions du, du, du Maïev, je crois que les gens seront bien surpris et les choses iront beaucoup mieux. Thank you very much, Mr. Nagbe, two times for the good intervention and for the brevity in the intervention. Now we have three speakers on the list, and I, I intend to, to uh, close the list after the first speaker will speak. The first speaker is a distinguished permanent representative of Sweden. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, for organizing this meeting and also to uh, the uh, uh, permanent observer mission of the African Union and to the permanent mission of Republic of Chad for the leadership today. Um, I, I wanted to first uh, thank also everyone who has participated in this debate, all, all of you representing the various uh, uh, RECs here. I think it's been very encouraging to, to understand the dynamics of what you're doing, um, uh, the very positive momentum, but also the fact that you're frank about the challenges that are still there. I think what we need to try to use this week, the best way possible is to understand how we can improve the partnership and ensure that what we do here is connected and supportive of what you're uh, doing on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in, in, uh, in the various regions of Africa. A conflict-free Africa by 2020, uh, I, I cannot imagine a more important agenda. Not only does it address the imperative to end conflict in itself, but it also addresses the devastating developmental setbacks for individual countries and regions of violence and conflict. And as such, the implementation of this agenda is crucial for Africa's 2063 agenda, but also for the new sustainable development goals that were just uh, adopted uh, uh, two weeks ago. I, I had the honor to chair the Peace Building Commission here in, in New York, uh, and from our work in the commission, we have on several occasions witnessed the crucial role played by regional economic communities, not only for helping to silence the guns, but equally so to make sure that guns remain silent after they're silenced, or even more importantly, make sure that guns are never heard to begin with, the whole preventive uh, uh, agenda. Um, going forward, uh, we believe that uh, an imminent uh, target of an end to the conflict in the region in five years will require equally attentive and decisive action by your respective bodies, both to contribute to ending ongoing conflict and remain active through early warning and detecting potential lapses or relapses into conflict. And given the important role played by regional economic communities in the countries on the Peace Building Commission's agenda, which I chair, um, we have made partnership uh, with regional and sub-regional organizations a priority for the Commission. And I hope that this week uh, will provide for strengthening that cooperation. And I also hope that uh, at the end of this session, we'll find soon an opportunity for the Peace Building Commission to meet uh, and dedicate a session to discuss with you how we can find the added value and our respective roles so that we are supportive, um, uh, uh, mutually supportive. Um, finally, Mr. Chair, just to say that the reviews of peace operations currently underway, I think provides further impetus for us to look closer at how we can build stronger partnerships on peace building and conflict uh, prevention. Um, so uh, I think uh, that this entails institutionalizing cooperation, defined burden sharing, and also ensure predictable financing for regional organizations' capacity to respond to conflicts. And I think that's the other discussion that we need to have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. And I would like to, on my turn to thank you for the attention that you are giving to African issues, and particularly being the chair of the Peace Building Commission, where only six African countries are uh, under your supervision, and, uh, and uh, the, the, the excellent work that the Commission is doing in this regard 
is very highly appreciated by the United Nations and by, I'm sure, by the African Union as well. Uh, next speaker is uh, our distinguished colleague from the ECA. Uh, thank, thank you, Excellencies. Thank you very much for, for this opportunity. I want to restate our full confidence and gratitude to uh, USG Majid for, for his leadership and for putting together this interesting activity. I just want to say, as a point of information, Excellencies, that ECA's support to Agenda 23 especially with regards to the silencing of God, takes the form of three technical studies, which we just completed at the request of the African Union Commission. One study was on the Great Lakes. The other one was on, on the Horn of Africa, while the third one was on the Sahel. And our critical research question was really, how, why is conflict persisting in these areas? We made five findings which you can cluster uh, under five categories. We found issues relating to political security, political and security factors, issues regarding economic environment, that is the whole issue of poverty, mismanagement of migration and food insecurity. We found issues around social factors, that exclusion, marginalization, mismanagement of youth, the youth bulge. We found, fourthly, issues around institutions, weak governance, erosion of state's authority, leadership deficit, and lastly, excellencies, we found issues around geopolitical uh, arena uh, in terms of uh, the natural resource management, extremism, subversion of regional integration, and persistence of conflict. These studies are ready. And we will, be, we will be willing to, to pass them through to all member states through uh, Ambassador Majid's office and through Ambassador Tete's office. And I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the good work and cooperation that is extended to us from the ECA uh, at the, as our regional leg in dealing with the mandate of support for Africa and the African Union here in the United Nations. Uh, next uh, speaker is the civil society representative. Uh, but the Queen Mother, Mr. maybe, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I just want to add this little deliberation uh, to the conversation. And that is about the youth. Uh, this past week, again, it fits right into what we're discussing, silencing the gun. Uh, the youth gathered in Washington, D.C., and that was one of their top discussions. The rampant guns right here in the United States, but it was invited also by youth that came in from Africa and other parts of the world. You had a million of young people on Capitol Hill this past weekend, which you can go and see, which the anniversary of the Million Man March 70 years later, uh, led by Brother Minister Farrakhan. And to say that we listen to the youth and hearing from the youth what are some of their solutions, I think it's important that we look at best practices that are out there because we are all at the port right now, what do we do? And saying that, uh, Mr. Chairman and to our distinguished colleagues here, disarmament is the issue. How can the youth trust us since we have created this monster with small arms, what is the legacy that we're leaving to the young people? And how do we engage them in civil society where they are? How do we bridge that? Especially when mothers are crying every single day. When you take Amadou Diallo to Guinea, which I did, shot 41 times, even from authorities. How do you get them just to trust us and be a part of this conversation? I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the Queen Mother will come to answer your question uh, soon uh, as after we hear Madame Benita Diop uh, the Special Representative for uh, Women, Peace and Security of the African Union. Uh, 
um, and congratulations for the Africa Week. Um, silencing the Gun 2020, I think is a visionary agenda. But uh, we might recall what uh, Madiba have said. You know, he said one day, uh, it always seems impossible until it is done. It seems impossible until it is done. And it can be done. It can be done because I think uh, we have the target to 2020, which is uh, there. We know who can contribute to that. We have the RECs that are sitting here, uh, the United Nations Security Council, which have the main to bring peace in the world, but also we have partners and civil society, private sector, everybody should be participant in silencing the gun uh, by putting the priorities. But the issue is the how. Is the issue is the how we are going to coordinate and working together to silence those guns. I really want to congratulate the Rex for the work in member states for what they are doing on the ground. So uh, the primary beneficiary, if we silence the guns, are the women and children. And you have mentioned the women and children of Africa. 70% of the population, the total women and children, we cannot sign the, cars, the guns without them. I think we need to change a little bit the mindset and how we are going to engage the people of Africa. Because Agenda 2063 is about the people. It's a document, it's a program centered on the people of Africa. So we need to put them a priority. Tomorrow we celebrate 1325 UN resolution, which talk about women protection and participation. I'm not going to talk about only women victims, but how they could contribute to building peace in the continent. We need to have a critical review of uh, those resolution, we say implementation and implementation. I want to congratulate you, Mr. Abdulaziz, Ambassador Abdulaziz and Ambassador Antonio for putting the women and the children in the heart of the Africa Week. I think without them, we will not achieve the sustainable development goal. We will not achieve Agenda 2063 Women have demonstrated that they can contribute to silence the gun. They should be at the table effectively to silence the gun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, as you just rightly said, women and children are at the center and at the core of our work here in the United Nations, and I'm sure uh, that we, we, we will continue to cooperate together on, this, um, uh, uh, on, on these issues. Dr. McDash, you, you were outside and you came in uh, raising your hand. So you have two minutes, maximum three minutes, so, so that we can wrap up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just was in the bilateral meeting for the money with the African Bank of Development. It's very important for our exercises. Uh, anyway, uh, I would like to, to explain the, the importance for us as an African preview mechanism, our role on, the, on this topic. le rôle du mécanisme africain d'évaluation par les pairs pour la prévention et également la prévention du développement du terrorisme. Also, uh, Donc, uh, nous avons suffisamment de retours d'expérience dans ce domaine parce que lors d'un exercice que nous avons fait au Mali, avant que les Mali, événements ne se, que nous avons connus before, ne se développent, nous avons mis en garde en tant que, en, dans le cadre de, de cet exercice sur la nécessité de prendre en compte regarding the need to the besoin des populations take the people's needs into account so that terrorisme. a social crisis would not feed terrorism. 
And we indeed anticipated this, and I think in Tanzania as well, during uh, our exercise, we included this in our report because the first part of the report analyzes political governance and uh, contains elements of social stability. And here, sir, I'd like to tell you that as far as we're concerned, we think, we believe that our exercises, the exercises we carry out, which are inclusive, we, we are part, we involve in the national governance uh, uh, commissions, those in power and those in the opposition. And when we start, we start with the party in power. But when we issue our report, the opposition has to implement it. So the inclusiveness enables us to stand back and to look ahead in order to anticipate a social and ethnic crisis, which are often at the origin of uh, armed conflict. And crisis. So here, sir, we wish to say that we are willing to include the identification of potential conflicts which might emerge in member uh, countries of the African uh, peer review. We want to include these as warning signs and look at solutions then when we uh, draw up our action plans so that by means of prevention we uh, can restrict conflict. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much, Ed, uh, Dr. McDash, uh, representative of the distinguished representative of the APRM. Now, I think in the last round of questions and answers, there was only one question posed by the Queen Mother, which requires an answer. And, um, and uh, I don't know whether Ambassador Kaba would like to, to pick up this question from the Queen Mother. Okay. Merci bien. Uh, Thank you. Je crois que l'intervention que vient de faire tout à l'heure uh, l'envoyé spécial de la now présidente de la commission a uh, répondu en partie uh, à la préoccupation de la reine mère. Uh, les femmes by the et Queen les enfants Women and constituent le, 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 le potentiel de l'Afrique. Hold the les potential les enfants that Africa has. Subissent Women les conséquences and children des conflits. are those who suffer the consequences des, 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 of conflict, conflict. their impact. Donc, la nécessité pour nous, c'est de les impliquer so what we dans la gestion des conflits. C'est de conflict management. Impli les impliquer dans la résolution Involvement des conflits. C'est de les impliquer dans la prévention des conflits, c'est de les impliquer dans la mise en œuvre des opérations de maintien de la paix en Afrique, conformément à la résolution 13-25. Et je crois que c'est à ce travail que Madame l'envoyée spéciale de la présidente de la commission s'attelle depuis sa nomination. Uh, Je crois que si les femmes, compte tenu les femmes et les jeunes, compte tenu de leur pourcentage, sont effectivement impliquées dans la gestion de ces conflits, et si tous les instruments juridiques pris Pris sont mis en œuvre, je pense que à terme, les femmes seront au cœur de faire taire les armes à l'horizon 2020. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Ambassador Kaba. Et merci à tous les panélistes et les parleurs de REX pour votre contribution. Uh, for today's meeting. And um, I would like to ask you to join me in a round of applause for everybody that contributed into the discussion uh, in this particular session. Uh, we came to the conclusion of this meeting. Tomorrow, we, we out of recognition that it will be the review of Resolution 1325 
in the Security Council in the presence of prime ministers and ministers and others. We are not going to convene meetings that involve member states. We'll utilize tomorrow for meetings that involve the United Nations officials and the African Union um, officials with the Interdepartmental Task Force on African Affairs and other uh, bilateral meetings that we are going to convene. And we will resume our activities um, on starting Wednesday, the 14th of October. Uh, th there is a very important side event that is held in the morning. I would encourage people to attend uh, on a high-level event on 15 years of the women, peace and security in Africa, uh, stock-taking and perspective. And then we are going to hold a press conference. And then there is going to be in the afternoon another high-level event by the NEPAD agency, which is um, on African continental framework on youth development. And that raises the question that and answers and comes to discuss the issue of youth development mainstream into Agenda 2063. On Thursday, we have at 10 o'clock the annual briefing to member states uh, and UN system about the two reports of the Secretary General on the progress on the implementation of NEPAD and the causes of conflict and of, on the promotion of durable peace uh, and sustainable development um, in Africa. Uh, you can see the program in our new web, web, website that have been launched just two or three days ago. And uh, please tell us what do you think about this new website. And uh, we will be willing and eager to receive any uh, comments and any proposals to improve that website. And, um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next uh, meetings. Uh, my co-chair, Ambassador Sharif, and myself would like to thank you all for participating that actively. Do you want to say something? You close the meeting. No, member states usually close the meeting, so I would rather uh, give the floor, <laughs> pass on the floor to Ambassador Sharif. Merci, Monsieur le Co-président. Je pense que vous avez tout dit et nous avons suivi avec beaucoup d'intérêt et beaucoup d'attention toutes les interventions pertinentes sur l'objectif majeur qui consiste à faire taire les armes d'ici à 2020. Je retiens juste deux choses. Que beaucoup n'a pas été fait, mais il reste encore beaucoup à faire. Deuxième leçon que je tire and en écoutant les uns et les autres, et que nous avons beaucoup d'outils, euh, mais les défis auxquels nous faisons face But sont beaucoup plus importants que nos outils. More, Par conséquent, il va falloir tools, essayer de mettre à jour nos outils et le renforcer. Je ne veux pas revenir sur toutes les différentes them, propositions, mais je pense qu'il serait intéressant qu'il y ait un document qui puisse sanctionner cette rencontre et qui puisse intégrer toutes les différentes propositions faites aussi bien par les exposants, les représentants de CR, que les représentants des États membres ici présents. Et je pense que le temps est limité. Sinon, j'avais relevé quelques euh, quelques certainement à, 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 à retenir et à consigner dans un document, mais ce n'est pas le moment de le faire. J'espère que le bureau du conseiller spécial euh, mettra tout en œuvre pour qu'une synthèse de nos échanges puisse être euh, mise en place et distribuée à toutes les délégations pour nous permettre de renforcer davantage la réflexion et l'action au niveau des CR et de l'Union africaine. Je vous remercie. We are taking, uh, taking very close notes of all the proposals and all the point, points made, and you'll see my colleagues uh, uh, lined up up there with computers and taking uh, a good note of everything, and this is going to be reflected in a document and the publication that we will be publishing uh, after the, the, the week is over uh, for the benefit of continuation of the discussion. Vous m'avez donné le pouvoir de lever la séance. You gave me the power Donc, to adjourn sur votre autorisation, so, <laughs> je vous remercie I tous de votre participation assez précieuse et active. The, et, euh, je vous souhaite une très bonne soirée. La séance est levée.